you really do. You're a 21 year old punk fucking kid. This grandpa's given you everything all your fucking life. You've never had a car payment, a house payment. Everything you live in was given to you by grandpa. You fucking don't know what it's like to work for a fucking living like I do. To bust my fucking ass and do what I do. And you know what, Sean? You fucked me, and that's the way you got it. But you know what? Your grandpa's money will run out someday, and you'll have to feast for yourself. Get a fucking jog, you piece of shit. Welcome to Behind the Smoke Podcast, Barbecue War Stories. My name is Sean Walchef from Cali Comfort Barbecue. We are recording above the butcher shop with my man Derek Marceau from Valley Farm Market. And uh, today is a fucking badass day, Derek. It is. It's a beautiful very day. We have, very, very uh, exciting, man. We have probably at an icon, somebody that's been doing something that people are trying to do right now. This is a business and marketing podcast. We publish, this is our episode 31. Every Friday we come out um, and we really want to take people behind the scenes and cut the bullshit, you know, really cut the bullshit and let people know the pitfalls that happen. Let you know about failures that happen in business, that happen in marketing. Um, like we always say, it's just not always the, the sexy butterflies that everyone sees on the Instagram. It is it's, not the sexy Instagram photo at the end, even though we do, <laughs> we do love the sexy Instagram photo at the end of it. Um, what really, what, how you get there, the journey, the struggle, the themes, those are the things that, uh, that are important to us. And today, Sam, the cooking guy, 15 fucking Emmys. 15 fucking Emmys. You quit your job. You jumped off the cliff. We talk about an entrepreneurial cliff. Mm. Um, we talk about Derek and I being coaches, so to speak, to have people come and join us on their barbecue journey, on their restaurant journey. No mm. matter what the fuck you're doing in life, you better love what you're doing. You better want to wake up in the morning and absolutely do the best you can to learn more, to be a better person, and to give back. And um, for us... Having you here, having somebody that has an accomplished author, three cookbooks, not one, not two, fucking three cookbooks, a TV host, somebody that is, he was doing digital media before digital media was a fucking thing. He was, he's teaching television, mass, mass media, what he's doing because he was doing things so cutting edge back in uh, the early 2000s that now people are fucking, they're asking for the secrets. So uh, hopefully you're here to give us a little bit of a secret. Welcome. Man. Fucking wake up to you guys talking Welcome. nice stuff about me every day, man. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you. But by the way, what you said was you got to love what you do. That was, that was me. Or that was what I was aiming for, you know? Not to go into the whole thing too long, but I hated what I did to the point where the last year that I was, I was at a biotech company. I was the director of operations at a biotech company in Carlsbad. The last year, every day I drove into work, I would say the same thing. I would say, not this fucking place again. And it had nothing to do with the people. It had nothing to do with um, with the business. It had everything to do with it wasn't right for me. It was the classic three bears thing. You couldn't find a bed that was comfortable, right? Yeah. Did you know that then? Did you know no. that it wasn't? Or did, you, or did you think it was the business? Now looking back, you can see No, Derek, it. you know what? I didn't know what I wanted to do growing up, which I think... Is like 95% of the population. Sure. Uh, yeah. People don't fucking know what they want to do when they go to college. People, and that's the crazy college. thing. What we're saying to our, fucking college. To our, our 18 year old children in high school, seniors, here's what we want you to do, son or daughter. We yes. want you to put your finger on something that you'll take for the next four years, you'll specialize in, presumably something you want to do for the rest of your life. If they barely know themselves as people. <laughs> right. It's fucking nuts. I mean, right, they're all they're nothing but hormones. And just if you could slice open the head of an 18-year-old, it would just be like fucking rainbow of colors and shit and Ferris wheels and shit moving around and nothing, nothing uh positive about what they really want to do. Sure. Right. And we're saying, all right, figure it out. You're gonna go away for four years. Uh, that you know, the 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 Aussies and the Kiwis. And I think a lot of the Brits do this gap year. Yeah. You graduate from high school, you take a year off. And a lot of people will see it as just, oh, sending your kids off to fuck around for a year. Yeah. They help find themselves sure. in that time. I think that's huge. Isn't that, it's isn't huge, that the most right? fucking important I mean, a thing? year of, a, a year of maturity at that age is like five years, 10 years now as you get older. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no clue. I, I literally just followed my brother 
what he did. He went into marketing at school. I took marketing at school. He went to work for an advertising agency. I went to work for an advertising agency. One of his clients was a frozen yogurt place. Um, we bought a franchise, the franchise rights to Phoenix and moved there and did it. So you moved from Canada to Phoenix. Yeah, Canada to Phoenix to open up this uh, frozen yogurt store. We had were, you, one, were you married yet? I was married, yeah. Okay. We had one uh, open in Tempe. Uh, right side of uh, Phoenix. Beautiful place. Had a second one getting ready to sign a lease what, and a guy what, that had the right... What kind of startup costs are, are for a Froyo? It was about uh, then, mm, maybe a half. Yeah. You had to build a store. You have to sure. buy equipment. And fortunately, I was partners with it with my dad, my brother, and me. I had nothing. I was a kid. Mm-hmm. My father put the money in. My brother, it was one of his clients. He did a lot of the heavy thinking. And Kelly, my wife... And I did the heavy lifting. We ran the store. But then the guy who had the rights to Tucson really wanted Phoenix. And he made us an offer. And we said yes. And we sold it. I didn't know what to do. So I did what a lot of people don't know what to do when it comes to a career. I sold real estate. Yeah. Here. Moved to California because we had some family here. Sold the real estate for five years. Hated almost every minute of it. <laughs> it's I, I did, again, it's, it's the same rough. thing. I didn't like, you know, marketing. Sure. I didn't like frozen yogurt. I didn't like real estate. And it was okay. And I made money at it. I was okay at it. I mean, I think I'm a fairly personable guy. Yeah. So I did that part okay. I mean, I was a little light on the details a lot of the time. Right. Because right? there's a lot of stuff you have to know. Sure. Totally. But I, 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 I made an okay living for a few years. And then a guy that I had sold the house to started a biotech company. He goes, why don't you come work for me? And I go, I don't know anything about that. He goes, look, you know real estate. You can help with the leasing. You can help with the build outs and stuff like that. You'll be the facilities manager. It'll be great. So I went there. Well, I think you said something that's very important. Mm-hmm. You were you sold that guy's house. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So you developed a relationship mm-hmm. with him that he was confident enough in you to start doing fucking commercial real estate, which is a whole nother ball game. True. He came to me and he goes, uh, so I'm looking for a place now. I'd sold him his house. And he comes and he goes, all right, now I'm starting my own biotech company. He worked for, you know, a big pharma company then here. Right. Because I'm starting my own. I need a commercial space. What do you know about commercial real estate? I said, I got your, I got your back. Which I knew nothing. <laughs> sure. And I went to my broker and I go, fuck, you got to help me. And he goes, I'll, I'll lead you through this. It's, you know, so we figured it out and it all worked out. And then it, a few months into that process, he goes, come work for me. And I did. And I was there eight years. And the first three were exciting. Like the beginning of yogurt was exciting. Like the beginning of advertising and marketing was exciting. I'm always there and jazzed in the beginning. Sure. But then it starts to be that, well, maybe this isn't for me. And do I want to do this? And and I would sit at my desk and I go, this sucks. And I want my way out. And what do I do? And I had an idea about a travel show. One day, just a completely random thought in my head. I asked myself this question, which is maybe not a bad thing for people to ask themselves. I go, I fucking hate what I do. I can't stand this. The only thing I like about biotech, this company, is when we do like events and I get to be around a lot of people and I'm talking and and we've got Swedish partners coming in and I get to be with them for you know the day. And, and-, and, I, and I couldn't talk science. That wasn't my job. But I could tell them who the company was in our hearts. The kind of people that we were and why we'd be a good partner for you them could, that kind of stuff. You could tell them the why. I you could, could tell them the why. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So uh, sitting at my desk one day, I go like this. I go, fuck. I'm trying to like shoehorn myself into some pre-existing job. I literally would sit with the San Diego Union Tribune, run my finger down the help wanted general columns, <laughs> and look for a job title or description that I, like, I'd get smacked in the arm. Sorry. <laughs> i'd get smacked and suddenly i'd be like oh my god that's it i feel like the hand of god on my shoulder sure. as my finger would run across hotel night auditor and believe somehow that that was it well it i don't know my god doesn't work like that right. he yeah. didn't nudge me at all he's i think he was saying you could dude you got to figure this out by yourself so i say to myself one day in my bio, my biotech office that i had designed and built and was big windows and it was great what if somebody ran in the door right now and said, okay, bro, you can go do anything you want. Anything you want. No regard for family, income, what people thought, none of that stuff. What would it be? And instantly my response was, I wanted to go back to Tokyo. I'd been a few years before with my brother-in-law. He went for business. I went for my 40th birthday to myself. I hung out. I had a great time. And I thought that could be something I want to go back to Tokyo. So I instantly tried to figure out how do I get back to Tokyo? Sure. I could become a, a like a pilot or a flight attendant. I don't like the idea of right. having to be nice for 14 hours at a time to people. Because people, 
In the year 2017, treat flight attendants and flight personnel like shit. Absolutely. Right? Like they're like they're uh, slaves. Yeah, it's... Can I have another one of these? Nobody says thank you. They're just terrible. Oh, it's sure. disgusting. Right. It's so disgusting. I don't want to do that. I don't have to deal with the public like that because <laughs> a lot of the public sucks. Uh, I could teach English as a second language, but that didn't make any sense to me. I and mean, they moved my whole family there. We're going to have an apartment as big as... This studio right now, because it's Tokyo and it's expensive and we sleep standing up because there's no room. You know, I mean, what am I going to do? So I somehow I had this idea about travel. I'll start a travel show. Encouraging people to go to a place they hadn't been before. Don't go to the same place again this summer. Do something else. Go someplace else. Get out of your comfort zone. Right. Be uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable. So I pull a little crew together. Nobody's getting paid, but they're going to get a trip to Tokyo and Hong Kong that I'd managed to finagle the Hong Kong tourist board and a hotel association in Tokyo to partially underwrite. Well, finagle is a word for pretty much sponsorship. What, what, you know, what you're, what we all need to do. Yeah. There was no cash. Yeah. And I would write these, these long ass emails. They'd write me back and they'd say, well, what's the experience of the crew and this and this? Like, like I should have had something and I just, I overwhelmed them with words. Sure. I would write and back like 25 pages saying, yeah. I would ignore the question, but what's the experience <laughs> of the crew? And I'd say, you know, what really gets me excited about this is we're going to encourage people to go someplace that they don't think they can go. Forget the fact you don't speak the language or understand the street signs or even know what all the food is in a restaurant. This is experiential. This is what you should be doing. Don't, don't, don't go to Nebraska again. And by the way, this is not lifestyles of the rich and famous. I mean, it's not, you know, Tokyo on a dollar a day, but it's saying you can do this, showing people stuff that they don't think they can do. And everybody liked the idea. So we're all set to go a month before it's supposed to happen. 9-11 goes down. And I say that day changed other people's lives much more significantly than it changed mine because in the days following 9-11, I mean, I had, I had, I had no, no uh, travel show to go to. I couldn't go back to the biotech company. And though I wasn't, you know, personally affected by 9-11 and that I didn't know anyone, mm-hmm. still, it, it changed a lot of stuff for a lot of people. So you weren't, I'd sit you weren't going back to real estate. I wasn't going back to real estate. So I would sit at home. My wife would go to work. She'd go, what next? What are you going to do? And I'd go, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. And I watched like the worst cooking segment, literally in one of the first days following 9-11 <laughs> on uh, KUSI. They've gotten better. But this particular day, it was pretty bad. oh my God, it was a horror show of a cooking segment. <laughs> a, t- local TV doesn't really shoot uh, cooking well. Right. Sure. It's not like I've been to the Today Show a dozen times. They've got food stylists and a million cameras and they know their shit. Sure. Right. Um, local TV didn't necessarily do that great a job with it. It's one camera. Back in the day. Back in the day. I mean, you know, Fox. What's I'm your, on what's Fox your, a couple times doing, a month. What you're now. doing now at Fox 5 is Fox 5 is great. So, impressive. A, they've got a proper kitchen, right? Yes. right? We got it down. And I know, and I mean, that, anyway. So, I'm watching this, 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 this thing with a proper chef on KUSI he's wearing a chef whites and he's making a butternut squash soup and the camera doesn't leave the shot of him stirring in the pot and the it's anchors boring, don't know what he's, he's, he's using creme fraiche and they can't pronounce it they don't know what it is <laughs> it's just a horror show and I go holy shit somebody should do that shit better and then the light bulb went off above right. my head and when I should do that my wife came home I said forget travel I'm going to start a I'm going to start a, tra- a, a cooking show and she goes it's a good idea honey Thank nice. you. She goes, just one thing. I go, what? She goes, you can't cook. Man. <laughs> I go, but here's the thing, sweetheart. I will be my own weakest link. Sure. If I can make it, other people will. Well, you're- This is not watching a cooking show and seeing somebody make some complicated ass thing and going, that looks amazing. Now I'm hungry. Let's go out to eat. I wanted people to watch this stuff and go, that looks good and easy. I can make that. That's what I want. Well, well the, that's what's so the, intriguing to people too. Is I mean, I was just watching you the other day. I mean, it might have been a few months ago, and you're doing something with your son in the kitchen. Yeah. And you guys are making something, and you relate it just to the common person because you're in there. You're like, shit, I don't have. I don't know if it was sour cream or whatever you didn't yeah. have, but you substituted something else, and it was like perfect. That fucking that, happens. That, that's and, like that happens all day. the fucking time. In isn't the that, yeah. isn't that reality? Right. Right. Yeah. That's the shit that you never see when you watch Rachel Ray or no. Bobby Flay. Everything's perfect, right. and that's because there's a million people in the background sure. doing that. So okay, it's cool to watch. But it's not realistic. Sure. I met a guy whose previous job was, I don't know what the title was, but he worked on the Rachel Ray show. He was in the back and he was the cook-along guy. 
He did exactly what Rachel Ray was doing each step of the way. In case she dropped the 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 chicken breast on the floor, right. sure, and and ruined it, he would have one that could be swapped in right away. Sure. If she burnt something, he would have the one to swap in right away. I remember reading that Rachel Ray cut her finger quite badly in one of her early shoots. They stopped the tape. They they crazy glued it. We've all done that. Right. Yep. right? Crazy glued it. A little makeup you'd never know. Backed it up a bit and carried on like it never happened. Well, A, it does happen. And B, I've always shown it when it's happened. Mm-hmm. And people come up to me and they go, you make me feel like I can cook. I sure. go, you can. Right. You've yes. just been poisoned by other shows that make you think you can't. Well, I mean, I think the power in what you did back then yeah. by pitching this fucking cooking show was yeah. you were going after your own vulnerability. Mm-hmm. You were being fucking honest. My, You're like, I don't have this experience. I'm not an expert, yeah. but I'm going to show you my journey. And my, like, literally, that is what you've been documenting is you've been documenting your journey for people to relate to. It has. It and it's has. pissed because because you've become so successful. It's made people really fucking angry, like some chefs. I mean, the fact that somebody That's like you, though. I mean, when I was doing some research, the fact that somebody has 13 pages of a Yelp thread about why Sam the cooking guy sucks. <laughs> Who's that? I haven't seen that. <laughs> I love reading that stuff. No, but, I, but, I, but I, like, that's such a compliment to you. It's I such did a compliment. It. I'm not trying to take anything that's, away from chefs it, right. at when you're, all. When you're, I think when I'm you're making people. You're authentic. Thank you. You're fucking authentic. That's all I am. That's, that's it. All. That's Somebody who will, I am. You know when what? you read your cookbook, that's who you fucking are. Like, that's who I am. These are my dogs. This is my wife. This is my, this is my fucking house. Right? 13 pages, really? What's oh, 13 pages? Okay, yeah. wait a second. It's good. I, I, I used to, in the beginning, when people would write in and say, you know, you're a fucking idiot, I would write back, or that's a shitty recipe. I would write back to everything. Sure. And then I eventually learned not to do that anymore and stop. But I remember one day a guy wrote in, he goes, you're stupid and blah, 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 and you're trying to be cool. That really pissed me off. And I'd stopped responding to these things, but I wrote that guy back and I go, dude, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm not trying to be anything other than me. And if you ask my friends, I'm the exact same guy off camera that I am on. Sure. So fuck you. But right. the, but that that's why so many people are attracted to you because well, it's not fucking, there. you're not bullshitting. Like, you know, not I mean, to. I, I've, I've seen you mention that you burn yourself and people are like, why do you burn yourself on camera? Like, I, I don't fucking burn myself on camera. <laughs> I just burn myself when I'm cooking. They say, why, why do you eat food that's so hot that's going to burn your mouth? And I go, I do the same thing when I'm at home and there's no <laughs> camera and there's nobody there. If I take a, a, a pizza out of the oven. I'm going to cut a slice and take a bite instantly. I know it's not the brightest thing to do, but I'm also not the brightest guy I know. So it works. I shot a, I shot a, a TV segment with, a, with a, a station here. I won't mention the chef's name. But they gave each of us 10 bucks and said, go to the 99 cent store, buy food and make a meal. So they shot us individually at the 99 cent store, going around and getting our, getting our stuff. We're done. I go outside. I'm standing there talking to the anchor. They're waiting for the chef to come up. And the chef comes walking up. And uh, they introduce me. I go, hi, how are you? And the chef says, fine, and blah, blah, blah. And the chef casually looks down at my 99-cent bag. And I make a joke. And I go, oh, don't try and get any ideas of what I'm doing. And she, this look came over her face. And these are her exact <laughs> words. She goes, I don't need any ideas from you. <laughs> And I told somebody about that after. I go, wow, she's a real bitch. He goes, don't feel bad. She's a bitch to everyone. But still, there's a lot of chefs that don't like me. They think, sure. I'm, I don't know. That's a, it's a weird thing. I don't get it. It's I'm weird. not trying to be them. No. I, say, I don't even call myself a chef. I call myself a cook. Yeah. I believe a chef is trained either culinary school or in restaurant, right? Standing or, or behind better, the or line. Or better both. Or, or both, right? Yeah. Standing up all day long in terrible conditions. That, to me, is a chef. Sure. It's there, there's no test like a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. Anybody can put on any clothes they want and call themselves a chef. I've only ever called myself a cook. Well, the because that's all I am. But you empower the public people to be a part of your story. Thank you. To not feel intimidated by the word chef. To yeah. be intimidated by a recipe. To be intimidated by you know a chef coat or you know stuff in the kitchen that they don't know. How. It's like fuck, dude. Like just come and do it. Yeah. Do it. How like do you, you go I, to a you go to the restaurant a restaurant for the stuff you can't make, don't know how to make, or don't want to make? Sure. But at home, I'm hoping simply just to up people's food game at home. Don't buy a fast food burger. Again, make the burger. Because I'm telling you, 
Not only will it be better for you because there won't be preservatives and shit like that in there, but you're going to learn how to cook a burger. Right. Yeah. And now you've got that in your pocket, right? That's that's a gift you you can give people. And what happens is a lot of time, I mean, we talked about this when we had uh, Chef Andres on it, and it was like so good to talk to him because he was one of the most humble chefs I've ever met. And he was just, which by the way, stand not, not often a term that you associate with a chef. That's what we're just saying. It's like, there's, there's this pretentious attitude that they come with all the time. And it's like, well, here I'm above you. I'm this. It's like, look, no one's above anybody. Cut that shit out. Like there doesn't need to be this. Like I'm better. You have to do what I say. No, here you're you're cooking all the fucking time. These recipes are great. You're showing people that the common person can cook at home. You're giving them a gift. Now make it don't chefs, buy it. That's all. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's all it is. Make it don't buy it. It's awesome, and it's it's uh it's great. Like Sean said, to see that you were vulnerable enough to to be able to do that, yeah. and take that leap and say fuck, here I am, and fuck you for telling me I'm not fucking honest on who I am. This is who I am all the time. If you don't like it, it's 100 percent okay. There's a dial, and you can put channel up or channel down. <laughs> don't fucking watch me. Yeah. You know. So it's that's the, that's awesome. There's the uh, there's my uh, my. Um uh, my bone in ribeye from last night. Saw that reverse nice. sear. How pretty sexy. was that when dead it was cut sexy. open? Dead sexy. It was dead sexy. Yeah. It's a nice piece of nice piece of work. The reverse sear for me is it. Oh, that's oh, my favorite. Is it? Yeah. I think it's the best way. Oh, okay. I, I have sous vide. I've used sous vide a lot, and I was a huge proponent of sous vide. Yep. But I'm telling you, the difference between cooking a, a big piece of meat so nice. in, in a bag to heat it to the right temperature or roasting it in the oven at a lower temperature to get it where you want, shit happens to flavors when you reverse sear that you cannot get in sous vide. Absolutely. I sous vide chicken now. That's pretty much it. Right. I don't use it for anything else. No, I actually, I had uh, some stuff where they actually sous vide it and then reverse sear it at the end. And it was uh, fairly good. My, my brother-in-law does it at his house yeah. and it, it was good. But, but that was, that was uh, about an hour and a half in the oven at 275. And look at, it's, it's almost beautiful. wall to wall. And see the bottom? The bottom is a tiny bit more done than the top. The color, yeah. The color? Mm-hmm. That's because right when it was finished, I had taken it out. I went, shit, I didn't get any video of this. So you had to do it again? So I had to throw it back <laughs> into the pan and have my son grab my phone and get that. I haven't, and I chose not to post it, but still I got just a tiny bit more color on the bottom than I wanted, but it's still pretty damn That's good. a nice So now, 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 now that you just brought that up, yeah. your son, you grab your phone what we can do now with our phone and be a media company is yeah. it's fucking insane. Isn't it Com- crazy? Compared to you, what you had to do to submit your first pitch, right? Oh, God. So take us back to the first pitch. And then first one is on, wanna, is on my, we is on get my website. I don't I, know that. I love that you put it on your website. I love yeah. that you put like, no, because that goes back to how the whole fucking thing started is you're, you're honest and you're vulnerable and you're like, this is what the fuck, this was the beginning of, of what I did. I you paid know, it's a, like, I you're, paid, you're not trying to hide no, the fact that no, like, no, no. look at, this is how the fucking journey started. No, no, there's a, there's, I, in my original demo, this, if you watch it, you'll see the camera starts to shake. Look, yeah. I knew instinctively, I knew what I wanted it to look like, the style of it, but I couldn't do it myself. And I, I paid a guy probably five grand to make yeah. this 90 second thing. How did that you, right? How'd you find him? Uh, somebody had done some work at the biotech company for that, us. And that then you he liked? referred us. I like that guy. Yeah. He couldn't do this. So he gave me the name of another guy that was a fucking idiot. <laughs> I mean, look, how much can I complain? Because it got me worse. Sure. Except there's a moment. It's just a, a little bit choppy, so you might not see it. But the camera shakes. I just want it to be handheld, right? Yeah. It shakes like Catherine Hepburn in her <laughs> latter years is holding the camera. And then if you watch when the camera switches around, you'll see his own shadow on my cabinets. And then when it, when there's a shot of out the window, you see his C stand with like a tarp and shit on it. Wait, keep watching. Oh, this is really not very exciting for people listening right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't do this. But you're going to see it in a second. If you look out but, the window, you see it. Look at the C stand is is out. It doesn't matter. The people that are listening, everything that we talk about is in the show notes. Oh, it is. So okay, all of good. all of the links and oh, you've that's got cool. to that's go, right. you've that's got right. to go to fucking Sam's uh, website because he has all of his all of his links, all of his social, all of the media, all the multimedia. It's good. Um and you got to follow him because this guy's a content machine. But I couldn't find, as I was in my demo, I couldn't find my whisk. And the guy goes, okay, I'll just hit stop on the camera and you can find it. And I said, you know what? Let's actually leave it in. 
I think it's a pretty natural. Sure. That was the very beginnings of what I'm like now. It took me a while to find my voice. Yes. I was nervous. I believed if I'm doing a cooking show, I have to be like all the other cooking shows, right. which is a terrible way to be. Nobody needs another Bobby Flay. Nobody right. needs another Emerald, right? Right. That stuff we don't need. Be original. Be yourself. It's some of the best advice I can give for whatever your business is. Sure. But I didn't know that. So I had all my ingredients all chopped up, ready to go. Which was, that's fine. And then when I couldn't find my wish, the guy goes, no, you don't want to put that in, man. I go, somehow it feels natural to me. I do want to leave it in. So I did. And well, that was the that was the thing that uh, Alberto Pando at Channel 6 said made me stand out from the billions of other tapes yeah. he had seen. Really? I, think I believe really... it was a VHS that I sent them. <laughs> Brad. <Yeah. laughs> I think it's important for people to understand that, too, that it's – it's okay to be you. It's not yeah. It's not about trying to be a sheep and follow the flock. Mm -mm. Be yourself. Be secure in who you are. Yeah. And, and it's okay. You don't need to try to be like everybody else because everyone else isn't always doing it right. Yeah. Be who you are. Love yourself. Put out content and just be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and your followers that. are going to come. People are going to come. People are going to watch. It's going to be in those people that are watching are the organic followers that you truly do want anyways. It's not this, this bot person. These I want somebody to like me for me, <laughs> sure. not who they, not for the person that I'm right. faking myself. And when they, when they meet you like fucking Sam's a dick or, you know, whatever it is, it's like, cool, no, it's dude. actually who, who, who you are. This is, did you I just mean, call me a dick? I did. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not what I meant, but it's like, it's who you are on TV is who you are in person. That's, that's well, I mean, how I, it should be. I think one of the toughest things Hugged for that. just for me personally, I remember when we started getting on local TV <laughs> yeah. and we would go to the station and I was always fearful that I wouldn't come off as the barbecue expert. Yeah. I'm not the fucking barbecue expert. Yeah. Yeah. Gene Goy is the barbecue yeah, expert. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I, we use his knowledge to build our business, to create all of our recipes. And if they're going to ask me something that I don't know, then I'm going to look like a fucking idiot. Yeah. But once I got over that fear and realized that it's not about me, it's, it's about the event that we're doing. It's about promoting barbecue. It's about the charity that we're raising money for. Like, it's not fucking about me. That's so great. You know what? I've had this mantra that I've lived by. So I, I, it's this. I can't put it into good words, but it's basically if I only give a shit about the people that are watching, that's who I care about. Sure. Everything takes care of itself. That's, that's, my, that's my end customer. Yes. That's all that matters to me, really. And that's for us, you know, doing this podcast, it's the people that are listening. Yeah. I mean, we're so fortunate to have people all over the world yeah. that are, they've, they've found us, yeah. however they found us, whether it was on iTunes, whether it was some, they found us on Instagram, however the fuck that happened, but they're listening to Derek and I bullshit every week with yeah. people that we find fascinating as fuck. You know what I believed behind the smoke was really just going to be like a bunch of inbred motherfuckers <laughs> talking about what mesquite piece to use this week no. or how to inject that you know, turkey and that kind of shit. And it's not, it's far from that. It's I mean, so there's a little bit, it. there's a little bit of that stuff in there, but most of it is legitimately, but way behind the smoke. Way behind like the what, smoke. What's in the thinking? What's in the process? What's in the legacy? More successful the legacy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's great. Barbecue opened up those doors for us. Like the the low and slow smoke opened up fucking doors that would have never been there. I mean, we, you know, I'm a huge fucking Charger fan, and I would have never, you know, thought that I would get a check from the San Diego Chargers Mm. for providing food Mm -hmm. that my team cooked and worked their fucking ass off. But it all happened because of barbecue. You know, barbecue opened that door. But that's not the, that's not the stuff that's sexy. The stuff the stuff that actually means something is all the struggles that we had to go through to fucking get there. Because yeah. we failed on our like we failed multiple. That's why we start the podcast with that that voicemail. I mean that was our that was my <laughs> you know my my first business relationship and you know business yeah. business is messy. There's Where's nothing there's nothing fucking clean about it. He let's actually, call him. Let's call him right now. He actually now. works for one of my buddies. Does he? Yeah. Is he a dick in general? Um, uh, I think so. Or he was I just having so. a super bad day. Ah. Uh, should we'll we call, see. Should we I don't call know. him right now? We should get him on the podcast. That would be great. That, that would be a good reason. Ask him if he wants to. We can't any yeah. of that. <laughs> I remember my very first time. I think it was my one of my very first times on the radio. I was with, I want to say it was AJ. I can't remember who it was. And we're sitting in the studio and I said, you know what I find cool? That dump button that you guys use. That to me, I'm fascinated how in a sentence that's 14 words long, you can hit it at the right moment and just take the fuck or the shit out of the middle of it. <laughs> he goes, I know it's pretty good. I go, let's try it. And he goes, no, let's not. And I go, let's try it. 
and he's giving me this look. <laughs> no, let's not. He's giving me this look like, no, we don't want to do that. Yeah. We, let's, and he's like changing the subject right away. And so I'm not as dumb as quite as dumb as I looked. So I caught on. I go, okay. So we ended. It goes to commercial, and he goes, dude, this studio does not have a dump button in it. So if you had said a bad word, A, it would have gone out, people would have heard it, and then all the fucking idiots would have gone, oh, shit, the doors are open. Yeah, every time, right. every day they would call in just to say terrible stuff. That's it's funny. People want to do that. I I feel like in your in your cookbook, you want to say fuck a lot. I love the process of how you made your cookbook because it's exactly how who you are it's how you appear in your shows it's not how you are how you've been with us see it's, that's a that's a fucking that's a huge, it's fucking who you are really nice, like that's a you know, really you, nice compliment you, Thank you, you get very much. through three recipes and then you start talking about your dog oh by the way my dog and i like, feel like it sounds you know, like, like i talk but it, it sounds yeah. exactly like you talk oh by the way hey you know i love my dog by the way <laughs> so i so i um i get an email one day from an editor um and he says a uh, friend of mine told you about you he's in new york he goes, friend of mine told you, told me about you. Would you be interested in, in writing a cookbook? Oh, yeah. Never actually thought about it. Because I didn't have the normal culinary school, sure. restaurant, you know. Well, all those, of, all those fears that kind of you think. Like, we build, we build so many people up, all these industries. You build this stuff up, and you're like, there's no fucking way I can do it. Like, why should Derek and I be on the fucking, on TV, on local, you know, news promoting a barbecue? Like, it's freaky once. Like, it's and freaky. Then the second and time, then you get over guess it. Guess what? Everybody like, puts their pants on. Yeah. Well, generally, one leg at a time. I mean, maybe <laughs> firemen go too. But, <laughs> but so, he goes, you want to write a cookbook? And I go, yeah. And I go, what do you need? He goes, I want you to send me a proposal for a book. You go, okay, I hang up. Um, I call a, a female friend of mine who had just gotten a book um, accepted by a publisher. She sends me an outline for a book, like a woman's book, a woman's <laughs> self-help book, that I just, everywhere it was like woman's stuff, I made food, and I just followed this. And he writes me after about a week and a half, and he goes, what's up with the proposal? And I go, I'm not done yet. And he goes, why don't you just send it? Let me see what it looks like. So I send it to him. He goes, a, this is everything I do not want. Because I don't think you know how to write a cookbook. Uh, he goes, it's it's obvious you can't write a proposal. He goes, I think also, though, you probably don't know how to write a cookbook, and maybe we need to find a ghostwriter for you. And uh, clearly I got pissed. And I was like, sure. look, buddy, I'm going to write my own cookbook. He goes, he goes, look, settle down. If you think like the Rachel Rays and the whoever's of the world and not making a comparison to me, because if you think that the chefs of the world are writing all their own words, they're not. I go, what? It was right. like, guess what? There's no Santa Claus. Right. Go, like, I don't give a what? shit. I'm Jewish. but <laughs> so I, You're the I Jewish go, Santa Claus, right? He, he, goes like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. he goes like this. Here's what they do. They take a recipe. We'll call it for a lobster bisque. It's scratched on a piece of paper. They hand it to a ghostwriter and they go, we used to have this at my grandmother's house on weekends. And everybody would fight for the extra meat in the claw that she didn't put in, blah, blah, blah. The person would turn that into like a fancy head note, sure, sure. detail out the recipe, everything gets tested. It's fine. That day I said, if I get a chance to write a cookbook, I'm going to write every word myself. And apart from a few grammatical corrections sure. or... Him taking a recipe that says, you know, quarter cup green onions and making it say green onions, parentheses, scallions, because he goes, people on the East Coast don't know what a green onion is. Right. Uh, every word is mine. I think it sounds like me. Well, I mean, I think at that moment, you took control of your brand. You know, you were doing. Yeah, you're right. You, you were doing something that you that you hadn't done before. And you were going into an industry publishing that, you know, obviously you aspire to do yeah. and you hear all these things about. But then. You're, you're having this conversation. You're like, it feels wrong. You right, when you, you, you right when it fucking feels wrong, yeah. you're like, no. And that was probably one of the best decisions you made. You've said that. Uh, I've taken control of my brand um, in a couple different ways in this podcast. Referring to people should be genuine. They should be unique. They should be who they are. And that's... Maybe you need to come out with a top five or ten things. Yes, uh, you know that you learn maybe one thing in each podcast. But that's one of the things that people need to understand. You have to be unique. You have to be genuine. You have to be original. You have to find no your, own, your own voice. Find your voice. My that, embrace it. That video, sure. my original thing. Uh, I couldn't smile. I mean, there was a one or two forced smiles in it, but I was like, hi, I'm, I'm nervous Sam, as fuck. The cooking guy. Now I'm going to make this. I'm nervous as fuck. Exactly. And it took, it was like a solid six months 
before I really started to be me. Right. And that's when I really started to enjoy it. And, but by taking control of your brand, you're doing things right. like you're You're like, fuck it. I won't have a book deal. Or maybe I'll have to go pitch the book or I have to self publish right. the book. Whatever I have to do, yeah. I'm not going to do what they're telling me I need to yeah. do. And that's where you some know? of your biggest growth comes from, comes from is when you actually take control of it and say, okay, here's, here's my boundaries. Here's what I'm going to do. And now I can actually stand up for what, what, what I want to do. And I, I grow more in this time than I've ever grown. Yeah. You know, I think that's really, really important for people to understand. It's okay to be unique. It's okay to have those things, embrace who you are and you'll and grow. stand up for who you are. Yeah, and you'll, sure. you'll right? You have to fight sometimes. Yeah. You have to fight sometimes. I mean, I, I left, um, the guy's gone. So when I first started, so I send out my demos, um, the five people You're that sending I sent out VHS tapes, right? My VHS That's tapes, <laughs> fantastic. Who are you sending them to? I sent them out to. You send them to like st- just the studio, or is there? Did you find no, out I, who in the studio? I, I had names, but I didn't send to anybody local. Okay. I believe in the first impression <clears throat> theory, mm-hmm. and I thought if I'd sent a shitty demo to like any any local station, and they looked at it and they thought it sucked, they're not watching the redo when I send it back again. They're going to be like. I've seen that guy's stuff. I didn't like it the first time. I'm not going to like it now. That's actually pretty smart. I had yeah, somebody I tell me, that. thank you. I had yeah. somebody tell me um, the William Morris agency, when it was William Morris, now it's CAA, I think, in, in Los Angeles, told me that one of the news new mag, news magazine shows, like Insider or Tonight or Extra, those things, they were looking for like a host. So the call went out. They wanted like a, I don't, we'll just say they wanted like a Latino male from 25 to 29. So like the, 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 the inside edition people or whoever they were would go to like the three or four big agencies. They'd sit in a conference room and there'd be like a stack of DVDs. They would put one into the machine and they'd play and they were all audition tapes. They'd give it five or 10 seconds. There you go. If it didn't get them in five or 10 seconds, wow. it would come out and another one would go in. You really, in this business, you get one chance to make an impression. Wow. I think it's the same in any business. A, so I think a, if somebody it's comes attention. in, it's attention. Somebody comes in uh, it, it, to the, the, the grocery store downstairs, mm-hmm. which you should everybody should come to because it's pretty badass. Oh, and they walk yeah. up to the counter and your guys are a piece of shit. Right. They're having a bad day and they give them no attention, no love, right? I'm probably, if it's me, I'm probably walking out saying I'm not going back. It's Somebody it, comes in and they have like a sloppy plate. It's at your fucking pl- huge, the it's first fu- impression. First impression. So mm-hmm. I was really concerned about that. So I sent my stuff to any name I could get. You know, my father-in-law's neighbor friend that would come over so often was Gina Lou. Do you remember Gina Lou? Okay. She was, I think she was on Channel 8 here. She was an anchor on Channel 8. He knew her. I got a name from her of somebody that... Whatever. Anyway, I end but up you, with five you, you, names. You used your contacts. I used my contacts. I end up with five names. I don't know any of them. I send, uh, you know, my demo out, that thing we watch. And nobody liked it. Anything else with the demo? Was there a letter? Was there a pitch? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, it was the so same. Yeah. I sent them all Federal Express, and then I expected a phone call the next morning. <laughs> Monday, Federal <laughs> Express, five Waiting. things. The next morning, nothing. Next day, nothing, 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 nothing. And now I have to follow up with these guys. My wife Why would you- say, did you call them? Hun, you, you just can't send something and not follow up. Call to action, yeah. I don't, but I'm scared. But she's holding you accountable. I'm scared she's to follow up. She's holding you I'm fucking accountable. I'm scared to yeah, fucking follow scared, up. Uh, because what, what could is, happen? No. Right. No, I don't Sam. want to hear a no. That was fucking horrible. It was fucking you know, you horrible. Don't want, you don't want to hear it. So I'm not I'm not following up. I'm not following up. Because they're going to crush your dream. Up, You're like, I, I, this, I finally figured out what the fuck yeah. I want to do. Or she and then would, what, if, what if they all tell me fucking no? She would do this. She would go, did you, did you follow up? I'd go, yeah, I called them. <laughs> she was good. Well, I don't. I won't lie. I like that. Except she didn't know. I did call like at fucking midnight. When I knew <laughs> the dude or the l- woman wouldn't be at their desk, right? And then it would be an open safe <laughs> voicemail. Yeah. So one guy calls. One guy I, I I finally get, and he goes, "Yeah, I watched it." He goes, "Let me tell you something. Uh, you don't have a fucking chance." He actually said that. Thank actually, I appreciate said that. that. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I didn't appreciate that. I was very sad. I still have that How piece cool of paper. Yeah, but it, but see, you have that piece of paper, right? Yeah, I have that. That piece became of paper. that became your voicemail. Don't have a fucking chance. Yeah, you're but right. that became your voicemail. You're, you're right. I, you're I was right. rejected from right. every fucking law school in San Diego. Maybe Three that stuff. Maybe that shit's got to happen. They're framed on my wall because fuck no them. No kidding. 
Fuck them. Yeah, fuck because them. So, if I had gotten into law school, I wouldn't be here podcasting with you. Fuck boy. him. Fuck Atta that. Boy. You know? boy. Like, so so uh, I say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to now send it out to local stations. The idea was only for like a 90-second cooking segment. And then I'd make it once and I'd sell it to a whole bunch of stations. So I, say, I go, fuck it. Nobody likes me. I'm upset. But I'm going to use that. I'm going to send it to local stations. If the local stations now say your shit sucks, boy, <laughs> then I'll rethink the whole thing, but not before giving it a chance. And and uh, Channel 6, then it was a Fox affiliate. guy named Alberto Pando called me up and he goes, I want to talk to you. This was great. And when I finally sit in front of him, he goes, like, I'm going to be honest. I watched your tape the other night because I thought it was kind of odd. He goes, you're a little quirky, but in a good way. And so I had a couple people from the newsroom come in and watch it. He goes, they all said the same thing. He is odd. He is a little quirky, but it's very different. We haven't seen anything like this. And the guy put up a fucking mistake of not being able to find his whisk in. That's like some some unique, genuine shit. Yeah. Right? It's so real. It's I got a job. They didn't pay me. <laughs> I didn't ask for money. They didn't offer any money. And I worked for a year doing two 90-second segments a, a week. They'd come to my house. They'd shoot three or four. They'd go edit them. I'd go wait, to the station. Wait, I'd did you there. say they didn't pay you? You didn't make fucking millions of dollars and you still did the work. <laughs> like, is, is, let me tell you, you something. supposed to get rich quick. Let me tell you Aren't something. you supposed to get rich quick? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get, no, I did get a little. Hold on. What I the got fuck the, is going on? Wait, no, I didn't I get, get any that. money in my first year. And then, and then, um, the county of San Diego comes along and says, so no, no income, no income first year, no income, right? But you're still doing it. Yes. And your wife is supporting you. Yes. yes. And, and I'm, um, I'm consulting in the biotech business. And now the county of San Diego uh, comes along and says, we have a station. It's normally a board of supervisor meetings and, you know, uh, how not to be a bully at school. It's that kind of stuff. And we'd like to air a half hour TV show of yours. So that ended up getting co-produced between the Fox affiliate then and the county of San Diego. They went from 90 second to letting you do 30 minutes? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. My son in the back seat. Two days before I get that phone call, goes, Dad, would you like to have a real TV show? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you know, like a half an hour one. I go, you know what, sweetheart? I kind of dig this format. It's easy. Yeah. It's light. I think people can get it. Two days later, I get a phone call. Would you like to do a half hour show? I go, hell <laughs> yes, I would. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> here's, here's another, here's a, a lesson. When the door of opportunity opens, fucking walk through it. Yes. And maybe sometimes it's hard to recognize what's an opportunity. But that was an opportunity that I couldn't say no to. I couldn't be so uh, stuck in my ways that I'm only going to do a 90-second segment. You're willing to be uncomfortable again. Yeah. So I, mean, I did it. Yeah. Then they start paying me for the 90-second stuff. I think I got a couple hundred So who's bucks. on your team at this point? Is it just you? Uh, it's just me. So yeah. you're producing? You're well, coming- at, that point, at that point, the TV station well, comes to my house. It was Channel 6. Was okay. Channel 6. It was Channel Six comes to my house. They shoot three or four. How of these many people? Things, uh, two in the beginning, and then just one. Yeah, I like working with one camera. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a dance, but it's really but it's your dance. It's my dance. It's my way. Yeah. So let's say one person comes. They shoot. They take it away. Somebody edits them. Right. And now the station's paying me. I think they're paying me two hundred bucks. So it would air twice a week. So I'd get two hundred bucks on a Monday. Two hundred bucks on a on, what, a, on what a year Friday. is this? This is 2002. 2002. No, 2003. 2003. Okay. okay. 2001. Two, yeah. 2003, I'm starting to get a couple this hundred is, bucks. Uh, 22 minutes? No, no. Uh, this is 30? no. This is now now about eight months after the 90 second things start. Now they start paying me for those. Okay. And then when the half hour show starts, now yeah. I'm getting money from the county for the half hour show. Not a lot. A little bit. We say half hour, but we, we mean... 23 minutes. 23 minutes. 23 so and a half. 23 and a half is what it is. Okay. Yeah, without commercials, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's important now. I mean, I, I, yeah. I only bring it up because it's important now in the world that we live in. Because what you were doing then mm-hmm. means a lot. How television stations, how newspapers, how radio stations get revenue is changing. It's changing. It's Absolutely. changing significantly. Absolutely. And yes. you have been on the cutting edge and you have seen so many things throughout the year that I don't want to discredit the fact that no, yeah, it thanks. was 23 and a half. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll yeah, come yeah. back to it. Okay. Um, so um, so now I'm getting the half hour show starts. I'm getting a little money from uh, from uh, the county station. And the guy at Cox, 
a guy named Richard Jones. Wait, does the county still have a station? Yes, they do. Really? Absolutely. They don't do a good job letting us know about that. Yeah, I don't know if... The, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know that. I don't even know what channel <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> I don't know. County of San Diego. Really? Um, so the, the general manager at uh, Channel 6 then was a guy named Richard Jones. And Richard Jones stands in front of his uh, flip chart in his office... And he goes, so you're getting, you know, a couple hundred bucks when the, the 90 second stuff airs. Now that we've got this half hour show, we'll play, pay you the same way. You'll get another couple hundred bucks every time the half hour show airs. I go, cool. I say cool. Sure. Whether it's cool or not, it is what it is, right? At that point. Uh, so, I, look, I'm so the, thankful. The money, back, I mean, at it some wasn't point, about the it's money. not about the fucking my money. My mortgage it's, would say yeah. I wished it was about the money. <laughs> I own way less of my house now than I did way back then. But so it, there's the point that I'm getting to. The point I'm getting to is that the first check that I get from then Channel 6 is only 90 second money. There's no half hour money on it. So I call the station. I get the accounting people and they go, hey, we just didn't get the word from Richard that this was happening now. So just have no him contract. give us the word. Uh, no contract, right? So but I'm getting paid the 90 second money, and he says again. So I call him up. He was in New York doing something. I go, "Hey, uh, how you doing?" He goes, "Good." I go, "I just, you know, now that the half hour shows are airing, I'm not getting any money from that." He goes, uh, "What do you mean?" I go, "Well, remember, you know, you're going to pay me the same." He goes, "I never said that." I go, "What?" He goes, "I never said that." I go, "Wait a minute." I stood in your office at you at your flip chart, and you said we'll pay you the same way. We pay you for the 90 second stuff. When it airs, you'll get whatever, 200 bucks. Maybe it was more, but I don't think so. I'm making, I'm going to make a point here. His point is that he's not going to pay me. He's not coming off that. I said, okay, okay, good. Thank you. So I take that and now it's in my head and now it's bothering me that this guy would do that. And now without telling people what's happened to me, now I start picking up on people at the station, understanding this is this guy's MO. He's like that. He claimed to be super religious. He wore it like a shirt. I don't think guys that are super religious are supposed to be like that. Uh, Bernie Madoff was a religious uh, sure. ortho, a Jew. And look what he did to people. Right. So I say to myself one day, you know what? I don't want to work in this environment. I don't want to work for a guy like that. And I quit. I actually quit on the air, which was maybe a bit of a bitch move. But I knew, I knew if I live, said, live TV? if I said to Richard, live TV? Yeah. Oh, I knew yeah. if I said to Richard Jones, who's now left San Diego. And I'm telling you the day that he got fired from that station, you could hear everybody in San Diego that had ever worked for him. Yell out a secret scream yeah. or an out loud scream. You pulled a Jerry Maguire. <clears throat> it, you. Kind I'm, of. So I'm here's what it was. I knew if I said to Richard Jones, Hey, you know what? Uh, I think I'm going to leave. I'm just going to do my thing at the county or whatever. He would have been, okay, cool. Uh, thanks for two weeks' notice. This is your last day. Don't bother coming back. And I wanted to let people know that had become a fan of my segment Monday and Friday morning that I wasn't going to be there anymore. I didn't want to just go away. Sure. Right? Which usually happens. Which normally happens. I mean, so, it, like, you know, ESPN just laid off 150 people. Yeah. Nobody there's, knows. Nobody there's an article know. about 150 people, but, you know, we just had Jim Trotter in here. It's not... They don't go and tell you those personalities that no longer have jobs. You have to find it through right. Twitter or whatever channel you find. And there it. wasn't any of that then. Exactly. So, so I you said, had your platform and you're going to use said, your platform. I said, it's a Friday morning. I'm sitting there. Here's the style. The style would be, they'd say, all right, hey, uh, Sam's got a recipe this week and here it is. And then the 90-second package would run that they've shot and edited. And then when it came back to the anchors at the desk, I would be there with the did, pizza or the lasagna or whatever. Did you have a website at that time? Yeah. Your own website, or was it hosted on their site? No, no, it was all me. Awesome, always, always wow. me. Good. And so uh, they come back, and I'd have the food there. We talk about it for two minutes or so. Segment would end. It would be great. Hey, great, more fun with Sam. See you Monday. See you Friday. Whatever it was. So now, just as this is wrapping up, I go, "Hey, I've got some news." And they go, <laughs> "I'm recording this at home." And they go, "What?" I go, "Today's my last day." No, I wait. I go next Friday. They go, "Yeah." I go, "It's, it's going to be my last day." And they go, "What?" I go, yep, you know, it's time time to move on. Change is good for everybody, blah, blah, blah. You'll get somebody new here, all that kind of stuff. As I watched the segment back at home after, taped on my VHS machine, of course. Yes. I spoke two seconds after I say it's going to be my last day next Friday. They cut to like the shot that's coming up, like the waves rolling in at the beach, like the beauty shot, the shots they go to when they say, and we'll be yeah, back right after right, this, sure. right? But they leave the mics up so you can still hear the whole conversation. Oh, that's great. But they left that. And so, of course, also by the time I got home was a note from 
somebody saying, don't bother coming back. Yeah. Which I knew would happen anyways, but I took even, control. Even, even the, though you had no contract, you weren't, you weren't an employee, you weren't right. an independent no, contractor. No, no. Here's the point to circle back to. You be original, you have to be yourself, but you have to believe in what's going on. And don't work for pieces of shit. It has to I'm feel. So, it has yeah. to do fucking not feel right. Work for pieces of shit. I, I would rather work for somebody that was an asshole, but an honest asshole. Yes, that I can a transparent take, asshole. That I know what yeah. I'm dealing with. Oh, he's generally grumpy. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But when he says he's going to do something, he does it. Yes. The word after the fact that uh, I thought people, you know, were o- open with me about saying this guy's a, an ass because he says one thing and does another. I got flooded with that from so many people that had either worked at the station previously and had left or were still sure. there saying, good for you. Sure. You have to do it. I voted with my feet. I wouldn't work for a guy like that. Sit up for yourself. And, and then- my friend and my friends are like, dude, but just think what you're doing. You're you're leaving Fox, even a local Fox. To just have your shit air on the county of San Diego. Yeah. I go, but I don't know where I watch stuff half the time. Sure. I don't know if it's HBO or AMC or Stars or Bravo. I just know I go to a station or I go to my guide and I see what I have recorded. If you like me, you're recording me. You're going to follow me. So let's let's talk about that. Talk about you bringing people into your home yeah. to have cooking classes. Yeah. That why, was why did you do why? that? To make money? So, uh, no. Uh, I mean, ultimately. But in the very beginning. In the, be- in the beginning. In the beginning, I was asked to do a cooking class at a place called Great News. Great this News. Great sure. News. Oh, yeah. Isn't there anymore. No way. Oh, when the they, fuck did it close? Seriously? I don't know. Three years ago? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. It was the only was independent. The only fucking place you could go. Only independent have cookware classes. store we had. Yeah. They, there was had, another place called Voila. There was another place holy called. Shit. What was that place up in Encinitas I used to go to? Anyway, so somebody asked me to do a cooking class. I think you got a couple hundred bucks. So you're not doing it for the money, but I'm doing it. So I, I, I'm imagining if people like me in a cooking class, they'll watch the show. It was 100% promotion for the show. Smart. That was it. So I'm You're doing building these, a fan base. Right. And now I'm yeah. doing three different cookware stores around around San Diego and Sanitas, you know, a place in Del Mar and, and great news down at PB. But here's what I'm seeing. They have volunteers as your assistants. Lovely people that if they do three or four or five classes as a volunteer assistant, they get to come to one for free. And they like it and they're people that like to be around food. So I'll make like a whole salmon, blah, 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 comes out of the oven. I hand it to the assistants. They plate it and they serve it. And I start working on the next dish. Except now as I'm looking at the salmon plates going out to the people that have paid to see (laughs) Sam the cooking guy, I'm like, shit. I wouldn't fucking plate that. No. That's, there's too much sauce on that. There's not enough sauce on that. Right. That guy's got a huge piece and the person beside him is getting a little tiny piece that's not right. And I'm thinking, I'm going, wait a second. They're coming to see Sam, the cooking guy. Yeah. And hopefully they have expectations of me being entertaining and hopefully funny right. and nice and good food. And teaching them something. And teaching them something. Yeah. But now part of this is falling because I can't control it. So I said, fuck it. I'm going to stop doing this. Out. I'm going to take it. I'm going to control it myself. And I got all Martha Stewart because I needed to go. By the way, really good book to read. The the the, the hell is it called? It's the not her version. It's not an autobiography. It's an unauthorized biography or something. But it's really good. And the point about Martha Stewart is we'll whether you it, like we'll put it not, in the show notes. She Stewart, made though. her success herself. Yes. Nobody helped her. Because nobody wanted a woman doing what she was doing with her concept of the well, time. How many, how, many, how, many like people, how many people told her she was wrong? You know, pound how, sand, yeah, lady. You're wrong. You can't do it. Right. You know, and you're like, she's like, I know what I want to do. Yeah. Just like you did. I mean, you you taking control of your cooking class is a yeah. perfect example. Same thing with the book. So finally, I just say, fuck it. I'm going to do these classes myself. So I now put them on my website. And they would pay the store like 50 bucks a head. Mm-hmm. And they could have like 40 people. So it was a couple grand and they're paying me a couple hundred. And they're paying for food and some of their staff. But they're actually making out way better. Which I'm okay. They're in business to do that, right? Sure. I was just like something that they were selling. So now I'm like, okay, well now A, I can control it. And B, all that 50 bucks a person will be mine. Yes. So I put my first class on the website, 50 bucks, like sold out in like no time. So somebody said, (laughs) somebody said a friend of mine that owns Cafe 222, Terrell Gavry, you know, Cafe 222 is across Mm -hmm. from the convention center. It's like a breakfast place. It's amazing. Bobby Flay, she shot with Bobby Flay once. And Bobby Flay noticed how many people were lining up to get in, regardless of him being there. 
And he said, you're not charging enough. Because I feel like I've kind of hit my limit. He goes, do you see the line? Raise your prices. When the line starts to get smaller, maybe you're at that point. But right now, you can charge more. So my first class was 50 bucks, then 75, then 95, then 100 and a quarter, then 150 bucks a person. And I do not in good conscience think I can charge more than that. Mm -hmm. So I stopped at that. How long is the class? It was a solid couple of hours. Cocktails, probably too many. Cocktails, nice. Tons of food. That's always been my thing. Give them a little bit of a lot of things rather than like. Well, you're creating the like one giant pork chop and it's right. for it's them. hospitality. And, and I would argue about the price, and my wife would say, "Sweetheart, you got to understand something. You're not a cooking class. You're like a night of entertainment. Yes, yeah. that's what you're, you're like. an experience. Yeah, and you're letting people into your own home, which until I ended that because we were redoing our kitchen was completely fine. People go, but you're letting strangers in. I go. I know, but they're all, we all share a common, yes. I know it's not a common love of me or the show, but it's cooking people and it's community. It's all, it's, it's all good. Yeah. And I love these people and stuff. And they go, wow, I don't know if I could do that. The very last class I had at my house before I, we redid our kitchen, there was a knock at the door. I open up, there's a single guy there by himself, which often does like a wife or a, somebody would buy them a present to come to my house. The second I opened the door, I just got this weird vibe from this dude. Yeah. Weird vibe. And I went, shit i'm glad this is the last one i'm doing <laughs> nothing bad now happened. i'm inviting fucking strangers nothing bad my happened that's though. when it hit no 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 nothing yeah. bad happened nothing but bad he happened. he sat through the class he sat through the class he was fine <laughs> good but i kept an but, extra yeah. eye on him <laughs> like i'm chopping onions with one eye and it got my sure. eye on the dude with the other so i don't do i only do like um private stuff at my house now sure. right uh you know a bunch of attorneys biotech companies had something make it through a certain phase of drug development and testing they want to you know do something special for 20 people. That's the kind of thing that I do. That's great. So one point of contact, one point of responsibility. If something goes wrong and go back to the company and say, Hey, somebody got, nobody's gotten out of control, but I always say, I suggest car service because I like cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> I, make, I make okay. <laughs> well, with well, nothing happens until it does, you know? So yeah, you, you're, exactly right. You're batting it's average is pretty good right now. Yeah, so, so keep, keep it there. Gonna, I'm going to keep it there yeah. for sure. So uh, let's talk, let's talk about content, you yeah. know, Back to mm-hmm. what we were talking about before, how you had to have somebody, you hired someone to produce yeah. your segment. Yeah. Now you had your son bring you your phone. Yeah. So, you know, we live in a world, I mean, we talk about it on the podcast all the time is we live in a world where it's incredible what we can do with our device. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about uploading to all of our social channels. We're talking about Facebook live, Instagram videos, Instagram stories. It's amazing. Uh, movies shot with an iPhone. So, movies. Yeah. Movies. Edited. Whole movies. Whole yeah. movies. Edited. It's unbelievable. It's, insane. it's but it, and it's so impressive. It's you know, so impressive. it's so impressive. And the coolest thing is now the pot, even the podcast, like that's how people are consuming the podcast. They're, they have it on their phone. The Bluetooth technology exactly allows right. them to, instead of sitting in traffic and listening to commercials, right. they can niche down to exactly what the fuck they want to hear. I yeah. want to hear like something about- Like a guy about, who specializes in shoelaces. Yes. And how to tie them <laughs> sure. in weird ways. Sure. Yeah. Totally. You can fucking get it. You find anything. And you can get it and you don't have to be interrupted. No. You know, and you don't have to be, oh, this is- that's the problem is the interruption is what people hate. You know, we're, we value our time so much, yeah. you know, and valuing our time is you need to create content for people to consume. Mm-hmm. So how do you go through your process of creating your YouTube? I mean, your fucking YouTube channel is insane. It's unbelievable. Well, there's a lot of 25,000 people that have subscribed. Yeah, no, you I'm, have I'm three, happy. I'm happy. Three million that. YouTube v- views. I know. Three I know, and a half I know, million. I know. I'm happy. And you three know and what? a half million fucking and views. The, he, has, the, he has videos the, that have been viewed over a hundred over almost 200,000 views on some of these recipe well, videos. He's, he's, and he's being vulnerable again because I just saw something on, I don't know if it was Instagram on the screen. But it's free. But it was saying questions and answers for Thanksgiving stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, shit like that. That's you fucking, know, I'll tell you that's something. That's so rad. Here's the thing. Um, uh, my wife believes people will come up to me and, and say hi in a store because they feel like they know me. Mm-hmm. The appetite for like, like inside Sam stuff is really it's really significant. People like that. Sure. The more honest, the more real you can get, <clears throat> the more people like it. And I get, you know, my son says that's always been you. So to sit down and do like the Q&A for the Thanksgiving stuff, people really like that. They just like to see <laughs> the the kitchen or the house or sure. you know, I mean, often well, I get I get this, what studio do you shoot that at? And I go, 
dude, I say it's my house. And they go, I know you say it's your house, but I never actually believed it. I go, but it is my house. Why I wouldn't, the only time I lie is it's an obvious lie. Like, um, me being, me dressing up as Dr. Phil or Oprah Winfrey or not Oprah Winfrey, but, uh, Rachel Ray or Guy Fieri or shit like that. It's me completely effing around. Well, what was funny as shit is I woke up on Thanksgiving and I turn on Fox five because we have, we love how they do their thing and yeah. you're fucking on there. You're picking up phone calls because they're having a turkey hotline. You know? Turkey it's hotline. Turkey yeah. hotline. Caller calls in like, yeah. So how do I prevent having a dry turkey? Sam's like, you're fucked. It says it on it's, his face. Uh, he doesn't say it out loud. Come on. But on his face, he's like, you're fucked. You needed to brine that turkey. <laughs> yeah, you need to. By the way, I brined mine. I, and I spatched mine this year, which I haven't done before. Old spatchcock? I've spatched the chicken. I've never spatched the turkey. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Yeah. I think it was the best turkey I've made. How long yeah. did you brine it for? Uh, I think I put it in about 10 and, yeah. and pulled it out about uh, one or something. Okay. Yeah, we usually do ours anywhere from 12 hours to 24 hours. Yeah. And, and then do you dry it? I don't. Yeah. I actually um, will just season it there, and we usually spatchcock ours, cut them yeah. in half and smoke them or put them in the oven. I will say, out. I need better shears. Getting through a turkey backbone was not quite as easy as getting through a chicken one. Yeah. It's, There's a lot of shit. Even there. though they're hollow bones, it's still a it's still There's a lot of cut. We have a bandsaw, so it's, well, it's, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. <laughs> kind of spoiled. Two seconds. Yeah. But you got all the toys downstairs. We do. We do. But it's actually, to cut it on the sides, I can show you some tricks on on doing that it's actually pretty pretty easy you don't want to yeah. go right down the middle you want to go on each side to take out the backbone no that's what i did oh yeah i'm just saying even that was a lot more cutting yeah come on man i know how to cut spatchcock a fucking turkey well <laughs> you used I used kitchen shears yeah see, we... kitchen shears but i'm just saying cutting up the backbone up uh, the sides of a backbone of a chicken mm-hmm. was was simple just right. cut 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 I got to a couple spots in the turkey. I was like, I had to have two hands on the yeah. on the handles. You know, we usually just do, do a big butcher knife. Yeah, you guys works. can probably just whip yeah. that thing out, no problem, no yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. So Fox Five. So we had Scott Heath, president of Fox Five, on the yeah. Pod, on I the heard podcast, that one. And, uh, He's a nice guy. Did he wear a bow tie? Close. He uh, he actually he did. He yeah. he wore a fucking bow tie. Of course, course Scott. Yeah, unless unless he's swimming in the La Jolla Cove, you know, at four in the morning, yeah. and he's not going to be wearing the bow tie there. But and I showed uh, how to make gravy that morning, and then Bernard from the Marine Room shows some complicated ass like <laughs> fucking squash curry thing with seventy five ingredients. I'm like, dude. I love you, but you're trying to show people something useful. Yeah, right. it's Thanksgiving Day. What the now? fuck no are they going to do? do? They're too intimidated. Too intimidated. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly it's gnarly. Right. Yeah, it's gnarly shit. I mean, for me, simplicity is huge. Yeah. Some of my best recipes I've ever done are just a simplistic, you know, nice. Isn't that right? Yeah. Isn't that the way it should be? Yeah. I mean, that's the stuff. That's the stuff that at least my audience wants. They want simple stuff. Yeah. And I don't uh, want to go to a fucking place where you're giving me like a, a carrot and a piece of an asparagus fucking cross. And that's like, not my and thing. And there's man. all these ingredients in this one little bite. I'm like, fuck, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want, I want a nice solid plate of some good fucking food. Good. So I, I heard there's something called Captain Crunch Shrimp. No, it's Captain Crunch uh, t- seared tuna. Seared tuna. Which, if you haven't made, is and where is, where is this? Is mental. Where's the recipe? Yeah. Oh, where, the, can, where can you get it? You can get. Oh well, you used to be able to get it at Donovan's. At Donovan's. Right? Donovan sponsored um, the the live cast, the okay. the YouTube stuff that we do three like three times a week. Yep. That used to go as long as almost an hour and a half. And now we went. What are we doing? Now we've railed it way back in. It's now three four minutes. It's completely digestible. It's a length that people get. It, well, it makes a lot interest. of sense. People lose people interest, lose interest yeah. right? And right. it's very shareable. And our Your likes, attention have, spans our likes so have gone way, way up. up. My son was the one that said, Smart. I think you need to make it shorter, Dad. I, yep. like, I fought him so hard. <laughs> and now when I look at some of the old ones that are like a half an hour, an hour, I'm like, I won't even watch that shit. <laughs> So they sponsored the show for about a year, the live cast uh-huh. stuff. And and at some point I did that and they really liked it. And they said, can we put it on the menu? And I said, yeah. And they put it on the menu. We're talking about Captain Crunch cereal, Captain right? Crunch cereal, actual Captain Crunch cereal. C- crumbled up, meaning you know, like uh, dusted yeah, right. on the outside of tuna right. and then seared. And you serve it with Japanese mayonnaise and some sriracha and, and green onion. That's fucking great. I shot a show. We went out to the Coronado Islands, like in a half hour show. Went out to the Coronado Islands where they farm bluefin tuna mm-hmm. and showed the first segment was that whole process. We didn't show any tuna death because people don't really want to see that, but we talked about it a little bit and then showed at the packing plant where they 
they clean them and they box them up and they send them to the Skiji market in Tokyo to be auctioned off like the next day. Right. It's amazing, amazing process. The market I've been to is amazing. So they give me a giant ass piece of this tuna for me to now cook with the next three segments. And I need to show, I feel like I need to show people how to sear a piece of tuna with like nothing on it. Because a lot of friends would say, I'm kind of fucking it up. And I go, I know what you're doing. You're leaving it in the pan too long to get it where it looks right on the outside. You're not using enough heat. And by the time it looks right on the outside, you're done on the inside. Way more heat in the pan. Way, people are scared of heat. I tell people you got to use way more heat all the time. So way more heat in the pan, right? Basically room temperature tuna, super f- fast, 10 seconds max aside for like a rectangular piece. Pink in the middle, it's gorgeous. So I do that, and I want to show them how to do something on, on the outside. So this is the night before I have to shoot this. I'm going, all right, so I know instinctively I want to use Japanese mayonnaise, which I'm a big fan of. Do you carry it? Yep. Yeah. QP is the best. Yep. Uh, and sriracha. So I've got kind of savory. I've got spicy. I need something sweet. My mind always goes to the easiest thing possible. What if I just pressed a piece of tuna in sugar? But I don't like the sound of that. I don't like the idea of that. And I know what's going to happen. It's going to start to get burnt and it's going to have a terrible flavor. That's going to burn fast. Really bad. So brown sugar, same thing. So I go, what do I need? I want something crunchy. I want something that's got a little sweet to it. And I open up my pantry doors and there's a <laughs> fucking box of Cap'n Crunch staring at me. And I'm like, I have that moment. It's like the light, you know. All, only one light would be working in my house and shine down <laughs> on my face and you hear angels and stuff I'm like it's too good to be true so i take the box i put some in a ziploc bag i crunch it up and i do it and it's fantastic that's fucking the awesome. recipes on the website one of the be- i'm cooking for you know 10 people tonight a little private thing that's on the menu well, because it never never fails to impress but the best part about it is i think it sounds fucking terrible yeah. Captain Crunch seared tuna can't be a good thing. Right. And that's the fun part of it. And well, it's the, really good. And the fun part is that it's on fucking on Donovan. It was on Donovan's, Donovan's menu. Donovan's menu. I like, think when they fuck, moved to La Jolla, I don't think it, I don't think it made the the thing. I mean, those those are the ideas that would never happen unless yeah. somebody was willing yeah. to go through the journey yeah. and go through, hey, fuck, it might not work. <laughs> nobody might, that's nobody the thing. might Look, fucking that's order the that. thing with cooking. <laughs> if it doesn't work, you still get to eat it. I mean, it yeah. might not be great, right. but you still get to eat it. Some of the best things I've made have been when I did not have an ingredient that I thought I had in the pantry or in the fridge or in the house. Yeah. That's actually how our uh, carne asada recipe came up. We we <clears throat> didn't have um, our, our lemon pepper. We had another seasoning and uh, just put it in there and mix it up. And I added a few extra things to try to compensate. And I was like, that is fucking five times better <clears throat> than what we had before i I, I say to people look i know people get into a food rut they eat the same thing each day of the week and not always but tuesday night it's aunt ruth's chicken i go okay creatures of habit creatures of habit okay so if you want you want that system that's fine here's my suggestion pretend one of the main ingredients for aunt ruth's chicken no longer exists when you go to the store so let's say it's I, i mean i don't know chicken uh, Italian breadcrumbs, uh, apricot jam, which I suppose could work on some level or whatever, and, <laughs> and red onion, right? Pretend one of the bigger ingredients you can't get. So chicken's no longer available. Could you swap pork for that? Probably. Could you swap out uh, another kind of jam or maybe a chutney or something to make it a little more interesting than the apricot jam? Do that because that's been some of my best stuff. Sure. You you got to shake it up a bit. You, you have, can't eat the same thing all the to time. Fucking shake it up. And clearly, I'm a I'm a big lover of Asian food. My pantry's got a huge section of nothing but Asian stuff. And I say to people, you want to change your shit up? Throw a couple Asian condiments in your pantry and start using them. Yeah, that will take you in a whole new direction. Yeah, you need an inspiration? Go to my website. I mean, one of the you in your book, the grilling book. I mean, the you put fucking carne asada fries. Oh, why Fantastic. not? Fantastic. I mean, why if there's not? one reason to get that fucking that. that recipe for people yeah. listening yeah. all over the world, carne asada is something that is so near and dear. Derek and I talk about it on the podcast because of their Imperial Valley carne yeah. asada that they have. But carne asada is something that people don't... Carne asada and tri-tip isn't appreciated. No, it's not. I don't know why. That, no. It's a way to say, do they... So you know meat yeah. very well. Mm-hmm. What do they call tri-tip on the East Coast? Or are they not using it? They're not. Uh, no, they they used to grind all of it. So 
Greater Omaha, who's my packing house where I get all my mm-hmm. beef from, um, I was talking to Henry about this, the owner, uh, a few months ago, and he <clears> was saying it's not that they don't get it. Because I know their cows it. have it. <laughs> yeah, but the majority just comes to the West Coast. So they don't, oh, it's I not see. even I a, see. Lot, a lot of times because mm-hmm. they only have so many cattle that they, there's only two tri tip on a cattle. So yeah. there's not there's not an abundance of, of tri tip. So it all comes to California and a lot of the places, you know, Kansas, where I, I yeah. used to live, they don't even get the offering. People go, What's tri tip taste like? And I go, Man, it tastes like beef. Like heaven. Yeah. Really like heaven. Yeah. Hearty, delicious way. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, it's, that, uh, I, I talk about it all the time. It's it's one of the most underutilized pieces of meat because it's not a weight bearing muscle. Do you guys you guys uh, use it? Tri tip? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All the we time. Sell, we sell fucking so you much. You low and slow it, or you grill? Yeah, it? we yeah. Uh, we smoke it for about an hour yeah. and then we'll reverse, uh, re- sear. reverse sear it. Yeah, on our uh, Weber Weber uh, Kettle wow. Ranch. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you probably. I mean, we go through. We go through so much fucking tri tip. Two thousand pounds Gene, a week. Gene's yeah. slow smoking some tri tip right now. Yeah, just, just nice. for us. Yeah, cool. I can't wait. Sure. <laughs> Fucking hungry. So uh, one of the things when when you're when you're building your brand, you know, yeah. we have a lot of people that they want to jump off that entrepreneurial cliff. They mm-hmm. want to, you know, they're probably like you Mm -hmm. some people they might be in that fucking fucking, miserable they they might be listening to this podcast literally in their fucking car hating the fact going to a biotech or or (laughs) or worse (laughs) sitting in a a cubicle or their office right yeah one one earbud in yeah Yeah, even worse exactly right and that means they're doing that because they can't stand it yeah i say it all the time if you hate what you do you shouldn't do it i can't stand going to say the dry cleaner yes and the attitude of the person behind the counter is miserable is basically they, they might miserable. as well have tattooed fuck you <laughs> yeah. into their forehead i'm like if you hate it that much exactly. then you should be gone yes and so because of the way that i came into what i do like a weird way a back way this was no career plan to become a, a cook sure um when i end up doing like a like an event or a private thing People always want to hear the story. We've talked about yes. it. And I do it. And people will come up and they say, I'm miserable with what I do. I need to make a change. Do you have any suggestions? I go, what do you do? Well, I remember somebody saying once, I'm a teacher. I'm thinking that I want to be in theater. I might quit. And I'm like, whoa, hang on a second. Because it worked for me jumping off a cliff into a whole different world. And don't forget, I wasn't paid very much for sure. a long time. You can't assume that it's going to work for you. Absolutely. I not. say this. And it, it's. Maybe follow up on the point you just started to make. Dip your toe into the water. You want to be an actor or be in theater. That's fine. As a teacher, maybe you start working on community theater on weekends or at nights. I had an accountant say to me he wanted to be a baker, like own a bakery one day. I go, that's great. Do you bake a lot at home? He goes, well, as much as I can. I go, okay, so here's my, I'll give you one job. Go to a bakery you respect. Tell them you want to work there. You'll work for free. Apprentice, yeah. yeah. Apprentice for free. You have to get up at two o'clock in the morning to make the donuts or the bread or whatever it is. You'll see well, how much you really love into the lifestyle. <laughs> right. But how about this? You better how, fucking love how about it. putting yourself into the world to find out if you like it first before you jump off the cliff? Sure. Give away your accounting business and start doing it. Yeah. Well, it seems you might seems hate exciting. it. You might hate coming home and having flour under your fingernails Absolutely. every single day. And these are things you won't know until you get there. Yeah, we. I mean, we talk about on the podcast that people that are thinking about getting into the restaurant business, getting into the barbecue business. Yeah, go to a fuck. Go to a fucking farmers market. You know, try to just try to sell something. You know, cook your food, have an event, yeah. a paid event. Yeah, put it on and see if it's for you because there's there. Getting into this business, the margins are so, so small. Let me tell you They're something. So Here, fucking here's small. A, your business yes. uh, is one of the most difficult businesses out there. It has to be in the top two or three of all failing businesses. And here's what I think the problem is. I think you take Joe and, and, and Irene Smith sitting in an Italian restaurant eating lasagna. And Joe looks at Irene. He goes like this. Look how packed this place is. Yes. And this lasagna on a scale of one to ten is about a two. Irene, your lasagna is a 10. <laughs> Imagine how busy we could be if we had a restaurant with your lasagna. Let's open a restaurant. We love the idea of the restaurant. And they believe all it's going to take is Irene's lasagna. Yes. They don't know about employees and about how to buy enough to and make margins, today so you're not in margins and, and staffing and machinery and equipment and location. It doesn't matter, Irene. It's going to be good because your lasagna is great. 
And uh, just because I don't know how to run a restaurant, how hard could it be? You know how good I am at the holiday party we sure. have. I'm like the best host in the world. Right. So I'm going to walk around. I'll take care of people at the table. I'll say hi to everybody. You make your lasagna. We'll make a million dollars. Let's go quit and what then, we're doing and do that. Yeah. That's... And four months later, there's no reserves in the bank. They haven't planned for failure. They haven't planned for building a business. They, they don't know sued. marketing. They didn't they have sued. insurance. Yeah, it's terrible. The list goes and on the and doors on and didn't on. open as soon as they wanted them to. They're fucking yep. four they're months. Still in construction. They paying a lease. They're not even open yet. The doors aren't open. It's right, right. Shit that happens that you're like, geez, you can go under. So you can go under before you even open your so, fucking doors. So, so, so put yourself in a position where you start to learn a business. Yes, and don't expect because because you've got willingness that somebody's going to pay you. My first job in advertising, I really wanted to work for this one company, and they wouldn't hire me. And they looked at me one day and they said, you know what, we love you. We love your enthusiasm. We think you're a good guy for this job, but honestly, we can't afford to hire somebody that doesn't have experience. And I said, okay, I got it. I got an offer. Hire me for three months and don't pay me a cent. At the end of three months, if I'm a fuck up, you say goodbye. I haven't cost you anything. If I'm good, that's the day you start paying me. But not only do I have advertising knowledge, but I have advertising knowledge specific to this company. I know where the copier is. Uh, you can hand me a stack of papers and I can get to that client in two minutes because I know how to drive there. I know everything. They said, all right, we'll give you a job. And three months later, they said, we like you. We'll start paying you. And I said, thank you. I just accepted a position from one of your clients. There you go. So I right. will now be, yes. you'll now be working for me. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the, but you just got to get in. One of the important things too, is not just getting in, but being willing to touch every part of the business (sighs) possible. And because you're not getting paid, you're not worried about, oh, I need to get commission. I'm going to focus on commission. I don't give a fuck. I want to learn everything. I want to know about the janitor. I want to know about the reception. I want to know about every single thing that I can get my knowledge on. I'm going to be better at my fucking job. Cleaning that bathroom you yes. talked about in the beginning. Yeah, was it your story, right? Yeah. yeah. Clean that bathroom. My, I worked for my father for a couple of years. My first week was spent sweeping yeah. a warehouse that w- they were having a special event in. All I did was sweep. I get there. I'm all wide eyed and excited. Like, right. Sure. What I, it was basically the same thing. I want to cut meat. Yep. It was a welding business. I wanted to be on work on the desk and yeah. sales. And he goes, I got your first job. Come with me. Walk across the alley. It's a 20,000 square foot empty warehouse with like an inch of dust start sweeping yeah i go how much he goes everything i go when do i stop he goes when it's really clean (laughs) i don't know what dustbane is no dustbane is this heavy kind of green shit you throw on top of a dirty floor oh yeah yeah so when you dust when you sweep it keeps the dust leveled down wow i know what dustbane is because i swept a fucking twenty thousand square foot (laughs) warehouse for like four days there you go yeah. But I, but when you were the but, faci- when you were the facilities manager, I'm sure that was important to you with whoever was taking care of the fucking property. Of right? course it was. You're like, well, why the fuck aren't you looking at this? You have so no to matter, know no everything. matter what. You have the more that you know, people are so terrified to go and ask questions. You can't ask questions. somebody to do a job if you don't know if they're going to do it well or not. Yeah, we we, jo- we joke about that all the time when we talked about the the bathroom. I was so mad about doing it. It's the best thing that I ever did, and. The reason why is because I know how long it takes to clean that fucking bathroom now. I know how long it takes to make that pollo asada sauce that I had to make for fucking six months, you know, before my dad would let me do something else. I I know how long those jobs take. So when I say, hey, we got to get eight buckets of pollo done, all this carne asada done. If you're not doing it right, I know exactly. You know why. You know know what's going on. You're slacking, whatever it is. So although I was mad at the time, it's the best fucking thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, of course. It's the only way you have to do that stuff. People don't want to do that. People are like this. Well, I think I have a great voice. I want to become a professional singer. I should just be on The Voice or on uh, America's Got Talent or whatever. Well, how about getting out to some uh, open mic nights or some places where you can sing at a club to test your voice? Sure. In the beginning. You'd be surprised at what the hell a fucking audience will do for you. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Public yeah. speaking, people say all the time, you talk in front of a lot of people. How do you do it? I go, I was shitty in I the beginning. Pr- I practice. You I practice. Failed. You just have to do yeah. it. That's why they have these Toastmaster clubs or whatever that sure. you can stand up in front of 50 people and just talk about your T-shirt for a half an hour. Yeah. Which would be boring, but it would give you good experience. No, we, we did that at Kansas State when I went to college and we'd go talking at assemblies for kids. Right. And I remember the first time I did it, I was literally like shaking and I, I didn't know what to say. And then, you know, I'm, I'm talking. And then the second time it was easier. The third time. Now it's like you can put, I used to talk in front of 60,000 people at our, at our stadium. And now it's, it's just not that it's, 
you know, crazy easy, but it's it's not a big deal like it used no. to be. Seinfeld has this joke that he says the number one fear in of everybody is the is a fear of public speaking. He goes, that means at a funeral, somebody would rather be in the coffin than giving yeah. the eulogy. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And it's, yeah. it's, it, that's crazy to think about. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. It is crazy. It's fucking nuts to think that you... But of, for it, people, it's a legitimate fear. Absolutely. But how do you get over... I, I say this in this book, this book, the, the grilling book. Yes. Here's my quote in the beginning. Bicycle. If I can find it. Cooking is like riding a bike. The more you do it, the better you get. The reality is... Everything is like riding a bike. None of us could ride a bike in the beginning, right. and now we can. And the only difference between not being able to ride a bike and riding one is practice. Yes. Public speaking, same thing. Making the poil, the same thing. Can't Cleaning buy experience. a bathroom, same thing. Podcasting. Podcasting. Our first podcast so imagine was fucking first, terrible. Right. <laughs> My demo was fucking a, we've terrible. We've gotten a little bit better, and every right. time we're trying to keep adding value, keep giving people what they want to hear. You can't buy yeah. that experience. You just have to do it. You, you have, have to, do, to it. do it. You cannot just... We could there's have, no easy way to go around it. Just fucking embrace it and do it. People we, say, I can't cook, and I go, no. It's not that you can't cook. It's that you don't cook. Right. Make a uh, make a pineapple upside down. <coughs> the first time, maybe you burn the fuck out of it. Yeah. Maybe it's too sweet. Maybe you followed a recipe. And by the way, I say this all the time. Don't believe everything that's written down in a recipe. If it says right. eight cups of sugar and you're making yeah. something that's a cup full big at the end, maybe that's a fucking misprint. And it should have said one eighth of a cup, yes. right? Who knows how perfect Bobby Flay's ovens are when he says cook it for 45 minutes. Oh, if dear. your oven's not calibrated and your 350 is really four and a quarter right. and it says 45 minutes, but 20 minutes in smoke's coming out and you smell burn thing, check it. Don't say, well, Bobby Flay says 45. I got another yeah. 25 to go. You, you just have to do these things. Yeah. And I mean, we talk about, you know, on the digital marketing side, so many people get so terrified of, I don't know how to tweet because I don't have a Twitter account and if I do tweet, I don't know what I'm going to be tweeting about, or I don't want to post something on Instagram because I don't have anything that's Instagram worthy. Do it. Set up the profile, create the journey, post whatever the fuck you're doing, and you're going to learn along the way. So I mean, people it- are so fucking terrified. And you, like, I understand the fear because I was there too. Yeah. You know, it's I was. It's a fear of failure. It's a fear, like, it's even a fear of being judged. It's, a, it's, a, fear, it's a fear of, but that's it's, a th- it's a fear of worrying about those fucking Yelp reviews. It's a fear about, of, oh, they're not going to like who Sam the cooking guy is. It's a fear of us looking through and somebody writes a one star review of our restaurant right. and it's everything that, you know, just, it, it cuts right to the bottom of our soul. And we're like, well, you know, you want to scream from the mountaintop, hey, you know, we, we're not trying to fuck up, but we did. We're sorry. Get over the fear respond to it and keep moving on with life guy donovan's told me he goes look of course we try not to make a mistake ever he goes when we do we go so far on the other side so- over the other over the top to try and correct it that you hope you've erased any problem from the person's mind yeah it goes it happens right. it happens. you don't want it to happen but it happens i mean if you think about marketing a restaurant the amount of things that we do to get someone to come through the doors Jeez. when when you fuck up God, you, you're so lucky that somebody actually said something. We're so lucky someone took the time to write a comment or to put it on Yelp because right. maybe I can, maybe I can tell them, hey, I fucking care. See, I, I care a he, lot. I think people need to step up and say things. When I've had a horrible experience with an employee at some place, I talk about it. Yes, right? I, I try and find the person in charge and say. Just going to tell you something. And at my wife says, look, I, there's like no governor on my mouth. There's, <laughs> it just, I'll say, I try to do it nicely sometimes, but sometimes you, things need to be said because the owner can't always be in every part and see what's going on. Absolutely I tell people not. that every single time they tell me, you know, either a positive or a negative, And I just say, thank you. Without knowing, I can't fix it. If there's something exactly wrong, right. if you say, hey, this employee is doing this or, hey, this is the second time that I've got this and they mistagged it. If you don't tell me those things, yeah. I can't fix that problem. I so you, I man. thank him. I'm like, I thank you so much for telling me that. Yeah. I promise I'm, at our next meeting, I'm going to you know, make sure everyone knows about it and we are going to fix that. And here, I'm going to give you this take for free today. Yes, we hope to see you, you next much. time. And all of a sudden they come back and they're, guess what? Now they're more vested in my company than they were before they walked in. Can we know? all get along? We all kind of have to look out for each other sure. a little bit in that sense. But it's and, okay to hear, you know, you, someone say something bad. It's okay. I mean, you have to learn. You have to we, be open to criticism. We don't have a perfect restaurant. 
Don't like, you? We do not. We do not have a five a five star restaurant doesn't exist. How honest? Because there's <laughs> there's there's humans that work for us. Right. And fuck, I would love for us to be perfect every. I'm not perfect every day. But see, that's it. I'm not you, fucking perfect. But I'm gonna try every single day yeah. to make sure that I'm leading my team and my managers to to teach our staff, to teach our hosts to smile, to open the door, to say thank you, to say please, to do all those things. But, see, but guess what? Sometimes. There's going to be a situation, and we're going to fucking fail. We're going to fumble the football. We're going to fumble, and there's going to be a turnover. Look, back to that comment he made about walking into a dry cleaner and the person with basically fuck you written across their forehead. That's not being fair to the people that own the place and pour their heart into it. You yes. want it to be great. It really isn't. Yeah. You have to get out. If you hate what you do, just get the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Please, go well, find. You're going to be. Look, life is too short. I do yeah. not want to be on my final days on this planet and be. Wow, I really wish I had tried my hand at singing or, or, or roller skating or whatever. I don't want to leave with regrets. And I do not want to spend 30% of my day of my life, eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, whatever it is, working at a job that I hate. Right. I had a great life before cooking. My social life was good. My friends and family were good. One part that didn't work was my work part, and that's the part I needed to change. I think it's at least 30% of your life, and hating 30% of your life is not a good thing. So it, so now that you are your own company, yeah. you are your own brand, you, yeah, yeah. that 30%, talk about Sam's schedule. So. Oh, um, like on a, just on a any Monday through Sunday, what's Sam's we generally we like? generally shoot um, Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday from the house. We're shooting, yeah. So we're either Con- shooting, content. we're we're shooting content the online stuff, all the online driven. online stuff. We'd shoot those, and they'll take you know probably. Are you shooting I, specific for each platform, or are some of these cross utilized? Uh, no, it's all specific stuff. So, so like so the the YouTube, YouTube channel, yeah, right. That's that's shot my why, why, why is that? Because Sorry? I think this is important. Why is why do you do uh, something different for each platform? Oh no no no. So the YouTube stuff mm-hmm. is also plays Instagram sure. or Twitter. It's all linked on all that yeah. stuff and goes onto my website. But the other stuff that I shoot is I shoot stuff for uh Bed Bath and Beyond. Yes. We've shot How did that happen? Uh somebody that knew me, um, that knew of me came a few years ago and said, we want to try and inject some personality into what we do. We're a big box store. Huge. Content is everything these days. It's the story. It's and that's because what, these huge corporations can't, you can't be a huge big box retailer anymore and not tell a story. You have to tell a story. You have to fucking tell and a And it's story. one thing to show a picture uh, of a KitchenAid, KitchenAid mixer, stand a mixer. stock photo. <laughs> Right. It's another thing to have a video there that people can see, oh, I can do all that stuff with it. Here's a video on uh, 10 things to do with a waffle iron, and none of them are making waffles. Yeah. Hey, this is a waffle iron. Of course it can make waffles, but I'm going to show you 10 other things that you can make with That's it. That's great. Right? Cool French toast or eggs or, you know, who knows? Add, those, add that big, value. That, Right, that big box retailer, they have to be willing to do that, and they have to be willing to invest in you and your voice. Yeah, you know, because if they try to, pit, because especially now, because you've built up all your brand equity, yeah, and you did that by saying no, yeah, you said it a, no yeah, a lot, yeah, yeah, I said you know, no a lot. so but pe- we're moving into a different world where people are trying to pivot the way that you you can yeah. the way that we can as single yeah. you know as a single butcher shop as a single restaurant yeah. and i think it's giving us an incredible advantage and that's one of the things that makes us the most excited because you know things that used to be unreachable like getting on tv like getting on the radio those things are, have Look gone what's by the available wayside. for exactly yeah. you know it's they've a, gone by the wayside and yeah. people are they're so attracted to things that are not full of shit that aren't bullshit. Mm. You know, you we get so tired of being force fed stuff. Mm-hmm. Whether you go to a website and you're force fed a pop up ad, mm. like I don't want the fucking pop up ad. No. I well, want to go to a site. I want to go to a site that's you. giving me something. When I go to your site, you're giving away so much content. You're asking for nothing. Yeah, you ask for nothing. Yeah. And we like might to, change in that a, in, a, <laughs> in a traditional well, sense. In, 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 you're right. We ask tra- for nothing. We're starting to have sense. an idea about about a a. How can I put it? We're thinking about a slightly 
different version in addition to what we do what we do won't change but for people that want more yes more more and more inside we're thinking about an option for that i mean it's huge because you're what what you're doing is what so many people especially now it's the hot thing you're a brand ambassador for bed bath and beyond mm. i mean literally they've hired you mm -hmm. to promote yeah their they products. bought they bought into sam the cooking yeah game. they like the style they like the way we do our stuff and it's they, been and three they, and a half and years and they see this these fucking numbers that you're putting up and they can see that value not only is it are there 25,000 subscribers, but those people are active subscribers. Yes, active. They are engaged right. subscribers, right. which never is completely have, We have a, our newsletter that goes out once a month is mm -hmm. completely free. I've never once signed anybody up for that. Yeah. That I am disgusted when I start getting something yes. and <laughs> I hit unsubscribe and I hope that the option I did not sign up for this is there. Yes. And if it's not, if there's a reason, I put that in. There's nothing that infuriates me more. Isn't it horrible? I fucking hate it. So I, the 25,000 people that get the newsletter or 30 or whatever it is now, the 25,000 people on, on YouTube or the Facebook people, those people, those people have willingly come to me because they want whatever my brand of nonsense it, is. It's permission. It's permission. You, yeah. like, and that goes they've to bought Seth, Seth, Seth Godin, permission-based marketing. I mean, yeah. they want it. They've opted in. And they want it, and now you're giving them content that they find valuable. And I try and look at what I give them. I'm occasionally there's nonsense, and you know, there's pictures <laughs> of my dogs and stuff looking but, cute, but whatever. Not, but people like that stuff. But I, I try and put things on there that they can really use. They'll look at it and they'll go, "This makes me better in my kitchen." I want them to have that. When people say you've taught me how to cook, I can't get a bigger compliment. It's. it's I mean, I'd like them to say you're handsome, but I didn't get that very often. Right. So you've taught me how to cook. That's the thing that gets me crazy. But it's, you humanize it's happy. It's who you are. Mm. You you are who your family is, and you talk about your wife. You talk mm. about your dogs. You talk mm. about your kids. You bring people into your home. Right. You know we we've been fortunate to you know interview people that have been on the radio for decades. You know right. people like Scott Kaplan, people yeah. like Jeff Dotseth, and they say multiple times that. You know, through all their years of broadcasting, what people will come and talk to them about when they're out and about is, oh, I remember when you were talking about your son, yeah. you know, I that remember fits. when that, I remember when you clicks. when you got when you were talking about him, you know, playing baseball because you were coaching him. And yeah. like, I, you know, it brought me in mm. as opposed to I, the fucking Charger score, the Padres, score, whatever that was. Yeah. But those are the things where you start to relate to people yeah, because yeah, yeah, you understand, yeah. you know, I just had my first son, you know, he's five months old and we've talked about it. Throughout this podcast, training. I think I see him on your on your uh, <laughs> your stuff more than I see you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But I mean, I'm a proud dad, you know, and I'm learning how to be a dad, and I'm learning how to you know figure out that journey. And there's a lot of people that are trying to figure that out as well. By the way, know? he's now coming into a really cool age. He is. I know people say all ages are cool, but I think uh, five six months. Yeah. There's a there's a palpable difference. They start looking up and sitting up, and they're. He's 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 registered our dog Diego. Like, yeah. Now he can see that there's a dog. Yeah. And he's like trying to figure out what mm. the fuck is that. You see the pieces yeah. like, and the, like the wheels working like, totally. Before before Absolutely. it was you know there was no dog there and like yeah. now it's like uh, he's on my radar. Yeah. So now I'm gonna start fucking with the dog pretty soon. <laughs> well, he he recognizes you more. <laughs> it's, cool. it's really cool. I I like that stuff. I no, like it's that exciting. Stuff. I, I mean, like seeing that stuff. Yeah, especially like when they start to like see you and they. You yeah. know, can recognize you and they, they get excited. And yeah. those are, I mean, moments you can't, can't buy. I mean, I have two boys and expecting our third and it's uh, congratulations. It's really, really. What are you hoping for? Time. Hoping for a girl? No, it's a boy. It is a boy. So I have three boys. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Here's my experience with boys. They're more work when they're younger mm -hmm. because they're, they're active, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're wrestling, they're falling, they're breaking, they're like on the couch and over the back and, Right, we'd go to friends' houses that have daughters, and the girls would be sitting there coloring, <laughs> all subdued, and my boys would be like breaking shit. Right. <laughs> but what happens at about 15, 16, maybe less, the girl game becomes way worse because it's a mental game. My wife even, she's like, I'm actually like really excited that it's another boy because it's gonna be like don't have to deal with the drama. Don't have to deal no, with all look that at this. stuff. I can have a fight with one of my boys. Yeah. And five minutes later, we're watching Goodfellas together there you go. on the couch or Seinfeld. <laughs> right. We're big Seinfeld fans. Yeah. You have a fight with a girl. <laughs> and like five months later, <laughs> still... you can still be getting the cold shoulder. <laughs> right. You don't know why, but you're, you're like, lucky. oh, shit. Five, you're lucky. Five months ago, we got a little tiff and you're still bringing that shit up. Yeah. Right. No, it's, I mean, I talked to my buddy about it the other day. I'm like, we were getting fist fights. 
Yeah. Like, and then it was like, okay, after like one of us like came to whoever, you know, whoever it was, I was like, all right, give me a hug. Get and right. We were dug and, and, and that was it. And we never, boys, we don't hold on to that we, stuff. We never like brought it up again. And no, my boys will be pretty close in age. I have a three year old, a two year old, and yeah, this, this one coming up. So it will be interesting to see how they all grow yeah, together. Good. Mine are three, three apart. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. Was there ever any pushback about talking about your dogs or talking about your wife or? Be- no, never. But it was never even a discussion. There was only one way I was ever going to do any of this. And it was that. It was that I it was feel Sam's like way. my way. I feel like it's my life is uh, is on my website, is in my TV shows. And, you're, you're journaling. And all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's a, if it's a, it's a different style. Yeah. It's not, you know, a Rachel Ray no, thing. She wouldn't talk about it's it. It's real. Not, it's real. You would never see Rachel Ray or Bobby Flay or any of these guys yell at someone behind the camera or even reference <laughs> that's that it's that fourth wall that's unbreakable that they call it yeah right um you're not supposed to mention that stuff but it didn't make sense to me when i'm in the middle of a shooting if somebody's phone goes off accidentally because they forgot to put it on mute it makes sense to me that i would look over and go hey i'm working <laughs> here why is your phone still on yeah because it happens. It Life does happens. Happen. So I've welcomed people into literally my home and my style and, and, and what I do. And if you, I, like you said, if you don't like it, then turn the channel. You don't have to watch it. Well, it's the it's, 13 page, it's, you know. It's funny because it's so unconventional, yet now yeah. you have huge companies that are realizing that they can't fucking keep doing what they were doing. Mm-mm. And I've heard you talk about that you produce things for Qualcomm. Mm. Talk about why Why are you doing things like that for Qualcomm? Yeah, so it was weird. So a friend of mine uh, who shot a bunch of my stuff in the beginning goes to work for Qualcomm uh, doing a whole bunch of cool stuff in their corporate videos. And he says one day in a meeting, you know what we need? We need somebody to front a bunch of these videos that's not an engineer. And they go, I kind of kind of see that. Sort of like what Bed Bath was doing. Uh, I mean, it's, trying it's, to put some personality. It's what, it's what Apple did. It's what Apple when did. When Apple finally figured out, hey, we can't just put fucking code in the New York Times and tell them how great the Macintosh is. It's, but once we get to the thousand, a thousand songs in your pocket, right. now you're talking. Right. So, so he goes, he goes, uh, they go, great. Like, like who? And he goes, well, I have a suggestion. A guy named Sam, the cooking guy, maybe, you know, and they go, how does that even make sense? The guy's a cook. <laughs> And he goes, it's not about the way he cooks. It's about the way he relates to people. He's sort of normal and people feel that and they understand him. And he speaks a language that I think wouldn't be too techy. And I think that's part of what we could change here. So they brought me in. They they didn't even really completely buy into it. But they were starting to get it by the end of the meeting. And somebody said, how'd you like to do it like a test for us? Do a video. And I said, okay, can I just make it anything? And they said, yeah. So I went away, I thought about it, and I wrote something called Qualcomm 101 because then, this was maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, uh, I my premise was if you went and asked 50 people in the city of San Diego what's Qualcomm, probably 90% of them would say it's a stadium. Yeah. They wouldn't say phones. So I wrote a thing called Qualcomm 101 that had a bunch of pop culture references in it and Ryan Seacrest and, and a little history of Qualcomm. They liked it so much, they, A, hired me to start to be in the front of a bunch of these videos for them, but they also used it for all their new hires for like two years. Sure. Yeah, they were well, very yeah. happy with it. I mean, you, you don't realize that that content that you're creating for a huge company like Qualcomm that is so valuable for their HR. I mean, that, right. that's compl- that, that's outside of what they want to tell their consumer. Yeah. Like when it's a B2B company, now you have a consumer facing company, but what about the value that they can use for fucking training? Yeah. And you know, right? and, and part of it is it's, it's, it's a big corporation. It's sometimes hard for them to create stuff. Sure. And not just see the corporate world that they live in. I'm a complete outsider. Yeah. I do a lot of stuff for them. Uh, one of the things is I have this one ongoing project we do. I go with a small crew of guys uh, to interview uh, technology executives, companies that use Qualcomm's technology all over the world to put together these short videos. You don't see me on camera. You don't hear me on camera. I'm just there interviewing like the CEO of Verizon or Samsung. That's that kind of stuff. That's I cool. just ask the questions. And they could send a Qualcomm person but I think what they like about me is, I again, it's this no filter thing. I mean, I don't say anything wrong. I'm, I'm not, you know, 
um, rude. I don't swear. Sure. I do it the right way. But I'm not scared of asking questions. I'm not scared of looking at a, a CEO of a, of a big techie company in London and saying, you know what? I like what you just said, but you kind of stammered a bit in the middle. I want you to rephrase it. And how about we put the end of the sentence first and then start with sure. this? And, and I'm not scared of saying that. And I think sometimes the big corporations, it's not that people are scared to say things. They're sometimes not comfortable saying it. Yeah. No, so, they're just so much added and, value. And, and they're too much of an expert. They're too yeah, much of an expert right. and it gets in their fucking way of selling the story, selling the why. When I have to interview, if you get back to the why. You're right. And, when like, I, when I have to interview somebody, I don't want to talk to them before the camera starts rolling. Because if I ask a question just out of curiosity, like, oh, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. How much meat do you sell? How many ribeye yeah. steaks do you sell a week? And you tell me, I already know that. Now I'm not going to ask that question. So I'm kind of like an innocent in the whole thing, right? I don't necessarily know, but I use what I know to ask the questions, to draw them out. I think I make them comfortable and it's a a successful thing. So now I'm not in front of Qualcomm videos anymore. I'm now in the back, either producing or writing or voicing or whatever. That's cool. cool. Is that something that you you plan on doing in the future? I like it. Yeah, I really like it. That's great. What, uh, What other projects do you have? On the horizon. What's next? Well, what's next? what's next? There's always this restaurant question that's out ah, there. That's, that I, uh, jump off the cliff. Come on down. I know. <laughs> Water's warm. Water's warm. <laughs> we're, 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 there may Water's be a warm. way. I mean, I don't like to, t- I don't talk about anything before anything happens. Sure. Because I hate to be, I had a friend, his name was Bill. And he would talk about these things that never materialized in his yeah. life. And I just, I call it the, I won't use his last name, but the <laughs> Bill whatever uh, syndrome. Yeah, you talk about shit. It might not happen, and then if it doesn't, then what's he fucking talking about that? He talked about that thing that he was going to do for two years, and it never happened. So there's that. Um, let's see, I, corporate stuff like content is everything. I do stuff with Bumblebee Tuna. That's cool. Chosen Foods, Finlandia, the Finlandia, Finlandia stuff is butter really cool. stuff is people, really cool. Yeah, we, yeah, we suggest yeah, yeah. people go on the website and check that out. Yeah. And by the see, time this see series, salmon and inner tube in, 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 in an Finland. inner tube in Finland. That was, we went was to Finland and shot these videos. They'll be playing great. again this, uh, this season. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. The Finns are very cool people. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we, uh, we're, we're so humbled that, you know, oh, our, you. our paths crossed and yeah. you know, for Derek and I to be able to be up at Del Mar and putting on a barbecue championship. It'll happen um, again yeah. next year, right? It'll happen yeah. again next year. That was and a great event. just talked to him yesterday. I mean, one, that of, was the, a great one of the best parts was, you know, we had all these moving parts. We had, you know, a PR company that was getting us in touch with you. Yeah. And then eventually it just got to so many email chains where Sam's just like, fuck that. Like, give me Sean's number. Yeah. He called me <laughs> and within 45 seconds, I was like... You know, I think we have the same blood type. Yeah. It's like no fucking bullshit. Can Just tell, tell me s- what the fuck needs to get done. Can I tell you something? Look, I <laughs> I believe PR firms have a place in the world. Yes. My experience with them is not, and I won't say which which uh, which company that's sure. up on this list. I do stuff with that had a PR firm that I almost came to blows with one day. <laughs> yeah. They were trying to tell me that a suggestion of mine didn't make sense and people weren't ready for it. And I go, wait a minute, don't you think? People talking about your stuff is the goal here. Yes, they were like, "Well, I don't know if the cop, if the if the public is ready for." And it wasn't anything crazy. I'll tell you when we go off the air, but it was. I was just like, "All right, let's just stop this now. Let me have a conversation with those people." Yes, because you guys are just honestly in the way. Yes, yep. and like that. But I mean, that gets, you, back, that gets back to the feeling. Once you feel it's wrong, yeah, you need to figure out a way. Is it is it the communication that's wrong? Is yes. it the person that I'm dealing with? Yes. Because yes. is there a yes. different yes. way to fucking do it? Because how many this times is way too goddamn to fucking this is way yeah. too complicated. Let's make it uncomplicated. We've had chains before where it was like, yeah. just give me in front of him. Yeah. Let me yeah. talk to him. Let, let, let's just sit down one on one and we'll talk and we'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. And, and it worked. It might time, not work. And when it's done, it's it's but it always fucking works. Yeah. It's so you much mean, easier you can figure out a right? way to, like, to make it work. And right. Cut out like 14, yeah. 14 yes. uh, steps of people of micro ma- micro right? management. So there's another another thing to put on that, you know, behind the smoke uh ten things. Our commandments. You have to know. Yeah. The commandments. Which is what did we just say? I've already forgotten. Cut out the middleman. I cut out the middleman. If it's no, I know it was. If it's not right, yeah, it probably isn't. It probably you isn't. need to you need to investigate. Yeah. That. If you're feeling in your stomach something is not right, then maybe that's something. To, then maybe it's not fucking. Then right. Then maybe it's not right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe no is is the way. If to the go. recipe says 
cook it for four hours, and at an hour and a half, there's smoke coming out of your yeah. fucking oven. Right. Maybe it's not right. Maybe, maybe you investigate it. Absolutely. If a relationship doesn't feel right, maybe you need to rethink it. Yeah. Well, for, Go with your gut. Your gut is is everything. It's everything. And for us, um, you know, the people that listen to this podcast, uh, Derek and I are so humbled every week to get notes on direct message um, on Instagram, people yeah. from Australia, people from Canada, people from Philadelphia. Um, it's it's just amazing to know that there's so many people that are doing cool shit. Yeah. And, you know, our job, Derek and I's job is just to share our struggles, you know, to yeah. share struggles, to bring people like you that are authentic, mm-hmm. that, you know, that are doing fucking amazing shit that you decided that, hey, the traditional way isn't going to work. But that's fucking fine. And now you're thriving and you've positioned yourself. And, you know, we want people to interact with you. We want them to get your your cookbooks for sure. Definitely Thanks. the grilling cookbooks because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that carne asada. Yeah, you don't give a bullshit. shit about the other ones. Come on. I know you guys are just flame, fire, that kind of thing. We, uh, no, I'm actually, I'm actually, I love cooking. Do you cook much? All, that, that's what I do. Sean? Uh, actually, I just started cooking with my wife. Yeah, we nice. started we started doing the uh, the delivery sun basket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is funny because I look at those recipes and then reading your cookbook, I love how you just, you know, you cut the bullshit you <laughs> and you just it? like mix it and fucking cook it. And it's like, that's it. Like, you know, it's uh, cut the bullshit. When but I, the, I, I'm, I can't believe how much zesting me and my wife are doing. I'm like, I have to fucking, <laughs> like, I swear it's like every time I'm like, what the fuck is zesting? Do you have a microplane? Like, what's that? The microplane zester? No, no, no microplane zester. What are you zesting with? I don't know. Whatever what the using? fuck is, whatever the fuck. A microplane. Is that what it is? Can you find a picture of it? Microplane zester is a, is a woodworking tool that was made by a company that that made woodworking tools. And somebody one day, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, we the, use the that. black one. Is yeah. that what it is? That's a microplane sister. So made by a woodworking company that one day somebody went, you know, I bet you we could do other things with this instead of rasping wood. Now that's like the number one selling zester, but it's good for anything. I mean, of course, look, the outside of a lemon or lime or orange is where all the flavor is. And, and a little lemon zest on top of something, a pasta at the end or whatever, really brings out a lot of flavor. But you can also use that for like super hard cheeses, for a little yeah. flake on top, chocolate to make a top of a whipping cream cake look more, you know, appealing and pretty and shit like that. Well, one of the, I mean, the, the good thing is, is that it's forced me and my wife to be in the kitchen together. When I go to a book signing or, or somebody, uh, I know I'm signing a book for a couple, I always write the same thing. Cook together. Yeah. Because that's the thing. Yeah. And if it's for an older couple, the husband might be, I, I don't cook. And I go, but that's okay. So A, tell me you'll do dishes. Yeah. But don't sit in one room like Ward Cleaver. Remember yeah. Beaver Cleaver? Oh, oh, yeah. too young. Don't sit in one room and wait for uh, June to bring the food out in her apron to the dining room. And then you go in. Right. Be in the fucking kitchen. Open a bottle of wine. Who cares you can't cook? Figure out how to cut that tomato yeah. or slice the bread, the baguette for garlic bread or something or whatever. You it's know, part of you the can dance. do shit. Yeah, you can is. do shit. We got a little bit away from that because we're chasing a two <laughs> year old around. I, but, no, but I, I totally get that. <laughs> granted, granted Kalina's uh, yeah. he's, he's not running around yet. Yeah. So he, I totally get that. My fucking kids are trying to open the oven and they're fucking. Yeah, like, oh no, no, no. You've got you tame those beasts <laughs> Dude, and let somebody. Gnarly. You need yeah. So you got boys and they're that age. So you need one person cooking and the other person like with the whip and the chain and yeah and holding them back i totally get yeah. that but still when you can you should be everybody should be in there yeah. so keep in contact with at at the cooking guys the social yeah, yeah, handle yeah. Uh, twitter instagram facebook subscribe on youtube go to his website um, buy the books uh, and just we, fucking cook yeah. just fucking just cook, cook remember yeah, cooking is like riding cook. a bike the more you do it the better you get yes. find something one new thing and i don't care if, it, if you get the recipe from one of my cookbooks or off my website or 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 Emeril Lagasse's stuff, wherever that is now. Once a week, we should all be making something new you've never like made that. before. Yes. Like Once that. a week. Yeah. And what what does that mean? That means at the end of a year, even if only half of those work out, you've got 25 new recipes to throw into your system. Awesome. So Tuesday isn't always Aunt Ruth's chicken. Yes. I like it. I love yeah. it. Cool we appreciate solid. you so much for coming out, taking yeah, thanks, the time man. out, man. It's awesome. Come here and buy all your meat. Yeah, that's right. 
So yeah, uh, be sure to follow him. Write a write a review for us on the on our podcast. Uh, it's Do very that. very important. Um, if you have the, we the, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, feel the need to write with thirteen us. pages of calling me out. <laughs> I can do that. Send that right to info at thecookingguy.com. It'll get to me. Yeah, hashtag, I want to know the hate. Hashtag any uh, questions for us. Um, hashtag yeah. behind the smoke on Twitter. Um, we'll get them. That's we'll great. get back to you. And uh, thanks for listening. We appreciate you guys. Thank you, Sam, yeah, for coming pleasure out. Pleasure to be here above the butcher shop. Let's uh, let's go it. get some try to let's go scope that out okay. <laughs>